the Dragonblood Legion arrived, surrounding Long Chen. Meng Qi and Chu Yao placed their hands on Long Chen's back, pouring their life energy and spiritual strength into him. Long Chen had already reached his limit against that lightning azure dragon. With their support, he entered a meditative state once more. Who cares about the Dragonblood Legion? Watch me destroy it with a wave of my hand, sneered true immortal Jiaoki. His manifestation erupted, and a giant killing monster with a drake tail appeared. His manifestation has fully awakened no, he's one step away. If his manifestation was fully awakened, that figure would be able to leave his manifestation however, although his manifestation was not fully awakened, his power caused even the nether passage expert's hearts to shudder. Destroy us? It seems those slaps in the face were ineffective. Does your face not hurt? How about this? If you can touch my sleeve, it will count as your win, declared Guo Ran. Within the Dragonblood Legion, Xia Chen formed hand seals. All the Dragonblood warrior's armor lit up, and runes enveloped every one of them. Heaven and earth seemed to fall out of existence. The Dragonblood Legion looked to be a mix of reality and illusion. Die. True immortal Jiaoki furiously swung his halberd. Long Chen's slaps had been the greatest humiliation of his life, and Mo Nian and Guo Ran were constantly bringing it up. A ray of divine light shot out of his halberd, going straight toward the Dragonblood Legion. It shot straight through them without the slightest resistance. However, this attack really just shot through them. It didn't cause any damage. It was like they were just a reflection that didn't truly exist. Idiot. I already said that I'd count it as your win if you could even touch my sleeve. Guo Ran's disdainful expression grew greater. During Long Chen's tribulation, the Dragonblood Legion had been hiding in the distance with one of Xia Chen's formations hiding their existence. Due to the great distance, even experts like Yu Ziaoyan hadn't sensed them. They had secretly chased Long Chen from Heavenly Fate Island to here, and they had maintained their peak condition the entire time. They're fully equipped with divine swords and divine armor. How can the Dragonblood Legion possess so many divine items? Startled cries rang out. When did divine items become so cheap? That's not all. It seems their armor and swords are linked and freshly forged. Could it be that they made them themselves that might be true? Look, their armor is connected into a grand formation. Other divine items can't possibly do that. People saw through the clues as to why true immortal Jiaoki's attack missed. It definitely had to do with the formation that the Dragonblood Warriors had formed. However, such a formation with so many people was something even the old monsters present had never seen before. Others also attacked, but as a result, they all missed without exception. The Dragonblood Legion was simply standing there, yet they also didn't seem to exist. They were untouchable. True immortal Jiaoki furiously charged toward the Dragonblood Legion, but somehow the Dragonblood Legion was able to maintain a certain distance from him no matter how he tried to approach them. What bullshit is this? Raged true immortal Jiaoki. Tens of thousands of experts had charged into the Brahma Divine Diagram, but not one of them was able to approach the Dragonblood Legion. That was truly a bizarre sight. It definitely has to do with their formation. Brute power isn't going to do anything, shouted Di Fang. Suddenly, the Brahma Divine Diagram shook. Rays of divine light fell from it, enveloping the Dragonblood Legion. The light was like ropes, twisting space. It actually marked the Dragonblood Legion's true position. Although it had looked like the Dragonblood Legion wasn't moving, they were actually moving according to some specific orbit. Now let's see where you will run, roared true immortal Jiaoki. He once more launched a powerful attack with his halberd. This time, with the Brahma Divine Diagram marking the Dragonblood Legion's position, they couldn't dodge. The halberd's divine light struck the Dragonblood Legion head on. However, it crumbled as it struck another layer of defense in front of the Dragonblood Legion. Idiot. Who's running? Your head really doesn't work too well. I already said. Just touching my sleeve would be your victory, said Guo Ran. More attacks came from the experts of Pill Valley, the ancient races, the corrupt path, the ancient family alliance, and the Xuan beasts. However, the majority of those attacks missed. After all, not everyone's attacks were as sharp as true immortal Jiaoki's. The Dragonblood Legion was like a fly, 
so fast that most people were unable to hit them. Spread out and activate your world energy to suppress space, shouted Di Fang. The tens of thousands of experts spread out, attacking the Dragonblood Legion from every direction. These people were powerful Empyreans, and using their world energy to suppress space, they formed a giant net that rapidly contracted. The spatial suppression also suppressed Xia Chen's formation. They were getting closer and closer, and there wasn't much room for the Dragonblood Legion to move any longer. The surrounding space had been frozen by their world energy. Eventually, the Dragonblood Legion's movement formation lost all effect. They were no longer able to move anywhere. You are called Guoran, right? Today, I, true immortal Jiaoki, shall cut you to pieces. To balance out their encirclement, true immortal Jiaoki, Ziluo, Huo Lian, Di Fang, Ji Yui Kan, Yan Wei, and the others had also spread out, making sure that the Dragonblood Legion couldn't charge out. Suddenly, the Dragonblood Legion's formation dissipated, just as everyone thought that it had crumbled under the pressure of tens of thousands of experts. A powerful surge of energy burst forth from within. Boom. The world energy suppressing the space exploded, and the surrounding experts were blown back. Their encirclement instantly enlarged. Only people like true immortal Jiaoki, Ziluo, Huo Lian, and Di Feng weren't blown back. The others were sent flying, with some even coughing up blood. Shocked, they looked at the center of the Dragonblood Legion to see that Long Chen, who had been exhausted, was now recovered. He was once more standing in the air. A sharp light in his eyes. He actually directly broke through to the first Havenstage of Life Star. Just now, that burst of power had been Long Chen's aura. With Meng Chi and Chu Yao's help, he had managed to link every single one of his astral spaces with the energy of his Yuan spirit. They were now in one giant formation, with the core being the primal chaos space and the 108,000 astral spaces as a loop of energy. In that instant, Long Chen gained another kind of energy. World energy. Brothers, today is a special day. The Dragonblood Legion has encountered countless dangers, countless sinister schemes. Why is that? Because we weren't strong enough, and because we weren't ruthless enough. Our enemies actually viewed us as easy targets. Today, we will bear our fangs, tear their flesh, and use their blood and corpses to show that the Dragonblood Legion is not so easy to bully. Whoever attacks us, We'll make them pay a painful price. I hereby announce that the Dragonblood Legion is becoming a major power. One that will not accept anyone's suppression. Brothers, today, show the world our oath. Dragonblood Legion, attack. Long Chen's voice surged out like thunder, ringing throughout the sky. The Dragonblood Legion roared, their killing intent soaring. Long Chen charged out, heading directly for true immortal Jiaoki. True immortal Jiaoki. You've always claimed that the Xuan beasts are number one in power. Try and receive an attack from me. Long Chen swung Evil Moon, using only his brute strength. However, this simple attack caused a tearing sound as if the world could not contain it. Having defeated the Azure Dragon that he had not defeated before, a knot that had been in his heart was undone. At the same time, his Azure Dragon essence blood had gone through a change, becoming even purer. He was now able to control it at will and he felt full of power. Even a little human dares to be arrogant true immortal Jiaoki furiously smashed his halberd at Long Chen. Humans are the most spiritual beings in this world. Or why would you make the effort to transform into human form all the time? How are you qualified to look down on the human race? Sneered Long Chen. Don't think that you're unrivaled just because you've passed your tribulation. All your power was barely enough to pass a simple tribulation. Against me. The only thing left for you is death, roared true immortal Jiaoki. Boom. Evil Moon met true immortal Jiaoki's halberd. The void exploded, and true immortal Jiaoki was pushed back. Even with all his power, true immortal Jiaoki was unable to stop Long Chen from pushing him back. That shocked everyone, as Long Chen was just using his physical strength, while true immortal Jiaoki was going all out. Humans are the most spiritual of all beings. Humans are the masters of this world. Humans are closer to the Tao. What qualifications do you have to insult the human race? Is this your power? Is this your pride? Is the Killendrake race's only ability to be slapped in the face? 
Long Chen was using only one hand as he continued to push back through immortal Jiaoki. In the distance, the experts of the Martial Heaven Alliance let out excited cheers. The Xuan beasts and ancient races always insulted the human race, calling them garbage and ants. Long Chen's words were the truth though. The human race was the one in charge of this world. Killen's wrath, Drake's might, true immortal Jiaoki roared, and he stamped on the ground, forcibly stopping Long Chen's momentum. A giant hole appeared in the ground around him. He had actually used a divine ability. However, even as he went all out to stop Long Chen, a cracking sound rang out clearly. True immortal Jiaoki's arms broke, and he was sent flying. True immortal Jiaoki's manifestation suddenly vanished. He took on his true form, becoming a monster larger than a mountain, one whose upper body was a killin but his lower body was a drake. As for his halberd, it grew in proportion to the rest of his body. Long Chen swung Evil Moon once more, and a giant saber image slashed into the halberd. Long Chen's body shook slightly, but true immortal Jiaoki was once more sent flying. Even in your strongest state, you aren't a match for me. Is this the power you claim to be above the human race? Sneered Long Chen. In his Xuan beast form, it was difficult to tell true immortal Jiaoki's expression. But based on his eyes, it seemed that he was angry. Die. A pillar of blood chi suddenly surged out of him. True immortal Jiaoki was actually activating his spirit blood. The fur covering his upper body lit up, while the scales on his lower body had runes appear on them. The void repeatedly exploded as true immortal Jiaoki clashed against Long Chen. But no matter what he did, he was unable to get an advantage over Long Chen. Suddenly, heaven and earth were split open by the arrival of a flame blade. The air ignited as it swung down. Huo Lian was joining in, and he had transformed into a flame giant. He was actually chanting the Nirvana scripture, allowing him to absorb the world's flame energy. Boom. Long Chen blocked with Evil Moon, but it resulted in his arm almost going numb. Huo Lian's power was exceptionally violent and even greater than true immortal Jiaoki's. Long Chen, you might have destroyed my physical body but I managed to turn that into a blessing by condensing the flame devil body. I now have an undying body, so to thank you, I'll let you see the power of the flame devil body when combined with the Nirvana scripture. The ground suddenly exploded all over and lava spurted out. It was like a scene from the apocalypse. Right at that moment, a giant blood-colored spear pierced toward Long Chen. As Ziluo joined in, an evil aura filled the air. He merged with the skeleton in his manifestation. And due to that merger, his aura became ten times stronger than before. Boom. Long Chen's palm split open, and a black chi instantly invaded the wound. However, thunder force flowed on Long Chen's hand, expelling the black chi. The sound of bone chilling mournful wails rang out as he incinerated the curse, which stemmed from the resentment of spirits. This is your world energy? It's not so strong. Long Chen looked at Zi Luo with a cold smile. True immortal Jiaoki had wanted to kill him with just his physical strength, as that was the only way to erase his heart devil. As for Huo Lian, he had condensed the flame devil body and had set foot onto another cultivation path. He no longer possessed world energy. It was only Zi Luo who had used his world energy, resulting in this injury. However, his power was not as great as Long Chen had expected. Long Chen, face your death. Just after receiving Zi Luo's attack, Yan Wei, whom Long Chen had never fought before, came charging over. He had a copper rod which he swung at him. At the same time, Ji Yui Ken's attack also arrived, and Di Feng's three divine items activated at once, unleashing rays of divine light at Long Chen. True immortal Jiaoki, Huo Lian, Zi Luo, Di Feng, Ji Yui Ken, and Yan Wei had surrounded him. Outside. The four fate princes were pointing their swords at Long Chen. It was unknown what attack they were brewing. Don't hold back. Use your world energy to capture Long Chen right now, or the others won't be able to hold on, shouted Di Fang. At this time, the Dragonblood Legion was finally on the offense. The other experts they had gathered were unable to stop them. Cloud had taken on the true form of the Cloud Chasing Heaven Swallowing Sparrow and she was viciously slaughtering everyone in her path. She seemed almost crazy, 
as if the people she was attacking were those that had killed her fellow cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrows. As for the other dragonblood warriors, they didn't charge over to Long Chen. They were fighting with a steady tempo. Only Cloud was going all out to repay the blood debt they owed her. Boom. Suddenly, a powerful chi wave spread, forcing back true immortal Jiaoki and the others. This chi wave contained an incredible amount of world energy. When it comes to world energy, I have it too. Let's see who's as stronger. Long Chen's 108,000 astral space is activated at once, and his first target was true immortal Jiaoki. True Immortal Jiaoki was sent tumbling back from a slash of Long Chen's saber, unable to resist. In front of the human race's power, you're the most inferior and, after striking True Immortal Jiaoki, Long Chen's saber turned, slashing behind him, Ziluo's spear was blocked, and then a burst of power sent its owner flying. How can his world energy be so terrifying they were shocked by this power? Long Chen's world energy was creating a halo of light around him. Within that region, this world's laws were forced back. That showed that his world energy was repelling the martial heaven continent's world energy. That was a shocking thing. For other people, they used their world energy through their weapons, or when their bodies clashed. That was the only time they could unleash it Noveloon.com if they unleashed it through the air like this. They would be suppressed by the martial heaven continent's laws. Their world energy would lose effect. However, Long Chen's world energy was so powerful that it forced back the martial heaven continent's laws. Attack. On the outside, Yu Ziaoyan could no longer endure it. He changed plans, actually sending the Danite furnace toward Long Chen. He had a bad feeling, so he dispelled the Brahma Divine Diagram's barrier. The old man's gaze had been locked on Yu Ziaoyan the entire time, and the heaven splitting blade immediately slashed toward him. Two Kian Chang and the seven bosses also attacked, as well as Ku Jinying, Yan Nanshan, and the other experts of the Martial Heaven Alliance. The Martial Heaven Alliance's people could see that Long Chen was their only hope, so they could not allow him to die. They would rather bet their lives on this youngster who had repeatedly created miracles. Dragonblood Legion, attack. We're killing until we're happy today. Guo Ran raised his saber, summoning his golden armor. Kill. The Dragonblood Warriors roared and activated their Dragonblood Battle Armor. They charged at the Nether Passage experts, disregarding the Life Star Disciples, which were no longer even qualified to enter the Dragonblood Legion's gazes. Seeing countless Nether Passage experts charge in, Long Chen smiled. Azure Dragon Battle Armor Azure Dragon Battle Armor A pillar of light soared into the sky, and a dragon's cry resounded. The experts of the Xuan beasts and ancient races shuddered, feeling an instinctual terror as a sacred and domineering dragon might spread. White scales slowly spread along Long Chen's body, going from his feet, calves, knees, and thighs. This time, the dragon scales no longer sparsely covered him. He was fully covered. Gravity seemed to lose effect. Countless boulders began to slowly float into the sky. This bizarre sight was shocking. This was a power that no one had seen before. Finally, the white scales finished covering Long Chen. It was like he was wearing white scale armor. Divine light flowed on top of the scales, and there was a vague dragon-shaped aura coiling around him. Once the Azure Dragon battle armor was complete, a burst of power spread in every direction, crushing the giant boulders floating in the sky. His divine ring and five-star battle armor also activated. As Long Chen felt the endless energy welling up within his body, he suddenly let out an earth-shattering roar. It was like he was expelling all of his accumulated resentment during these years with this one roar. Attack. Just as Long Chen was roaring, true immortal Jiaoki, Ziluo, Huo Lian, Di Fang, Ji Yui Kan, Yan Wei, and the four fate princes attacked at once. This time, their expressions were grave. They chose to coordinate their attacks so that they landed at the same time. They could tell that Long Chen was a monster. Capturing him alive was no longer much of a possibility. So they concentrated all their attacks in an attempt to kill him in one blow. Boom. Evil Moon spun through the air. A black arc shot out, blocking their attacks which came from every direction. As a result, true immortal Jiaoki and the others tumbled back, coughing up blood. What the distant experts on both sides were completely stunned. 
Even after joining forces, those peak heavenly geniuses were forced back so miserably. True immortal Jayaoki, I told you that you won. You succeeded in infuriating me, so you can be first. Long Chen stepped forward, unleashing a simple slash with Evil Moon. He didn't use any techniques. It was a simple attack, but there were already signs that the void was about to collapse. Boom. True immortal Jayaoki roared, going all out to block. As a result, his halberd went flying, and his arms shattered. His huge body slammed into the ground. His huge body suddenly vanished. He returned to his human form, summoning his nine-colored celestial horse and the Killin' War Chariot. He jumped in. Just as everyone was expecting him to use the Killin' War Chariot to fight, he actually fled for his life. His courage was already broken. That was because Long Chen had summoned the complete Azure Dragon battle armor, and his dragon essence blood was fully activated. Dragons were the emperors of all beasts. Even divine beasts had to kneel before them. It wasn't just a bloodline suppression but also a spiritual one. Seeing true immortal Jayaoki fleeing, Long Chen sneered. Wild, this one's yours. The ground in the distance suddenly exploded, and a giant figure came flying out. It was wild, and he was quickly in position to block true immortal Jayaoki's path. He swung his bone club. Boom. The Killin' War chariot exploded, and countless fragments flew out in every direction. A terrifying core ancestral divine item was actually smashed apart just like that. True immortal Jayaoki hadn't expected someone to be hiding beneath the earth. Even though his chariot blocked the blow, he coughed up blood from the impact. As for his nine-colored celestial horse, it was blown to pieces. Die. Wild once more swung his bone club. Wild had been arranged to be extra help if needed. He had a formation disc on him and Xia Chen had stealthily made arrangements throughout the battlefield so that he could move Wild anywhere throughout the battlefield without him doing anything. That was why Wild was so perfectly suited to block true immortal Jayaoki when he ran. Having gained enough distance to no longer be suppressed by Long Chen's dragon pressure, true immortal Jayaoki's fear vanished. With a furious howl, he summoned his Killin' Drake form once more, swinging his blazing halberd at Wild. Boom. Wild's 300-meter body was small in front of true immortal Jayaoki's giant true body, but the two of them were actually equally matched. The halberd and bone club rumbled, causing the world to shudder as well. Neither side was able to suppress the other. Flames almost burst out of true immortal Jayaoki. He had always viewed himself as having godlike power that no one could resist. Being beaten by Long Chen was one thing, as he possessed dragon blood that suppressed him. But where had this fellow come from to actually also not be suppressed by him in terms of power? A divine rune appeared on true immortal Jayaoki's forehead, and his blood chi sword. He was actually igniting his own essence blood in exchange for greater power. As a result, Wild was steadily forced back. Now Wild was also enraged, and his bronze skin suddenly became silver, and silver runes appeared in his eyes. Boom. True immortal Jayaoki was instantly blown back almost coughing up blood. True immortal Jayaoki was shocked. He had never seen such terrifying power. This was different from Long Chen. Wild once more smashed his club. To defend himself, true immortal Jayaoki raised his halberd hastily, but his powerful divine item was actually smashed apart, breaking into two fragments. His arms exploded, blood splattering. After one smash of his club, Wild followed it up with another smash. There was no technique. It was like a fool wildly swinging, but his power seemed endless. No. True immortal Jayaoki let out one final unwilling roar. Having ignited his essence blood, he had lost the ability to quickly restore his arms. Wild's club didn't stop just because of one unwilling roar. True immortal Jayaoki's head was smashed apart, which resulted in the death of his Yuan spirit as well. A generation's genius fell within the Xuan beasts. An elder let out a furious roar. He was the Killendrake race's leader. True immortal Jayaoki had been their top genius and was viewed as their hope for the future. Hence, they had bet all their resources on him, thinking that he would lead their race to a new glory. But he had died here. Once true immortal Jayaoki died, even before his body fell to the ground, Wild pounced forward, biting his corpse. Crunching sounds rang out. In just a few seconds, 
half of true immortal Jayaoki's corpse was devoured. Bastard. The Killendrake experts were infuriated and charged toward Wild. The Xuan beasts only viewed others as prey, but no one dared to view them like that. Hence, being defiled this way was a huge insult. Seeing others come to disturb him, Wild put away true immortal Jayaoki's corpse and raised his club. What shocked people was that even the leader of the Killendrake race, a second step nether passage expert, was instantly blown apart by a swing of Wild's club. His divine item was nothing in front of that club. After being killed, he transformed into his giant true form that delighted Wild. Food. Wild didn't cultivate. He strengthened himself purely from eating. During intense fights, he always exhausted a great deal of energy and got hungry. Now seeing that these people would become magical beasts after being killed, he was ecstatic. He charged toward the Nether Passage experts. Even Nether Passage experts were unable to block Wild's attacks. That bone club was too terrifying. Ordinary divine items would instantly be blown to bits. However, very quickly, Wild became dumbfounded to find that even after he had killed several more people, they didn't transform into magical beasts. Long Chen had told him that unless he had no other choice, he couldn't eat people. If they didn't transform, he couldn't eat them. Wild. Aim for the bigger ones. Those people will transform into magical beasts. You can eat those. Shouted Guo Ran from the distance. Hearing this reminder, Wild immediately charged toward one of his larger enemies. As expected, once he was killed with a simple swing of Wild's club, he transformed into a giant Xuan beast. Delighting Wild. Wild might be powerful, but his intelligence was low. He found it miraculous that a person could transform into a magical beast. He charged through the Xuan beasts, able to mostly tell who they were. As for those Xuan beasts, their expressions changed. A figure suddenly appeared, wielding a rod like weapon and smashed it at Wild. That's Long Jun Kang. Ku Jin Ying and the other's expressions changed. The one blocking Wild was actually the leader of the ancient races. The leader of the ancient races, Long Jun Kang, personally went to handle Wild with a copper rod in his hand. Legend was that this rod's runes had been personally engraved by an almighty expert of the ancient races, an expert so powerful that they had merged the magical arts of the human race and the divine abilities of the Xuan beasts. Wild didn't care who his opponent was though, seeing that he was another big one. Wild was delighted. Boom. The bone club collided with the copper rod. As a result, black cracks spread throughout the whole air. Wild's hand broke, and he flew across the ground. As for Long Jun Kang, he was actually forced back several steps. Old fellow, I want to eat you. Wild charged back toward Long Jun Kang. The experts present were all stunned. Just what kind of monster was Wild to be able to survive an attack from a third step nether passage expert? In fact, he didn't even seem to view him seriously. Wild was swinging his club through the air in a wheel-like fashion against the copper rod. They began to repeatedly clash, and they were actually evenly matched. How is that possible the great leader of the ancient races was actually stopped by a member of the junior generation? Long Jun Kang clearly wasn't holding back, but Wild was capable of stopping him. No one had expected there to be such a terrifying figure within the Dragonblood Legion capable of stopping one of the overlord figures of the continent. However, at the very least, Wild had been stopped, allowing the Xuan beasts to sigh with relief. They were terrified of Wild. On the other side, the old man was fighting against Yu Ziaoyan. This time, Yu Ziaoyan had learned from his last fight against the old man. The Brahma Divine Diagram and Danite Furnace danced through the air, not giving the old man any chance to use the ninth form of Split the Heavens. He was clearly afraid of that move and didn't want to give the old man a chance to use that suicidal move. Even he wasn't confident in receiving the old man's suicidal blow. Ku Jin Ying was blocking Di Long, Yan Nanshan was blocking Zhang Ziyang, and the other three Grand Elders were blocking Pen Wanli and Zi Wentian. HMPH. Your longevity has run out. There's no way you can reach Samsara. Are you just using your lives to fight at death's door? Sneered Zi Wentian. Haha. <laughs> Fighting at death's door? We haven't reached that point. Right? We've been very lucky. We can already see hope for the future. Even if we die. We can die at peace. 
but it seems that the corrupt path is different. One of the three corrupt kings was slain by Ling Shen, and so you had to add a replacement. But even so, they're unable to stop Long Chen. It seems that the one at their death's door is your side, responded the Grand Elder fighting him. Originally, due to their longevity running out, they would have only been able to unleash 70% of their peak power. However, Long Chen had brought back the life-extending fruit from the yin-yang world. If used during a person's middle ages, then it could increase their lifespan by 300 years. However, the Grand Elders had already gone too far. Even consuming them had only given them an extra 20 years. They didn't really care about being able to live 20 more years. They had already witnessed the passing of countless years, of countless changes in the world. The only thing that had been holding them back from leaving peacefully was their worry for the Martial Heaven Alliance. The reason why they cared about the life-extending fruit was because it allowed them to unleash 90% of their original peak power. Although they would die after going all out, they were satisfied. Furthermore, the most terrifying thing in this world was someone who didn't fear death. The Grand Elders were exactly that. As soon as they started fighting, they would be fighting to the death no matter what. Their killing power was not a joke. That was why the supreme powers were not actually fighting. Other than the old man and Yu Ziaoyan, as well as Wild and Long Jun Kang, the others were simply facing each other. There were two critical figures that made them unable to fight all out. One was the unfettered Alseer, and the other was Ji Wuming. The two of them had already charged past, going toward Long Chen. So Zi Wentian and the others didn't need to attack. They just needed to make sure that their opponents didn't get to interfere. As for why Ku Jianying and the others didn't do anything, that was because just as those two had started flying over, Li Xiangxuan had sent a message to them that Long Chen wanted to let the two of them pass. Although they didn't know what Long Chen was planning, they chose to trust him. On that side, Long Chen was still dominating his battlefield. His blade was unleashing waves of Saber Chi that were like crescent moons. After true immortal Jiaoki had fled, he had fallen at Wild's hands. Then the others had attacked, but Long Chen blocked Huo Lian, Zi Luo, Di Feng, Yan Wei, and Ji Yui Ken's attack with one slash of his saber and then attacked the four fate princes as their swords lit up, not giving them a chance to unleash their combination arts. Long Chen felt like he was full of energy and that he would explode if he didn't use it. The four fate princes had just been injured by his attack when a black saber image tore through them, slaying them easily. True immortal Jiaoki had fled, and now the four fate princes were dead. That was a fatal blow to their morale. Huo Lian, Di Feng, Zi Luo, Ji Yui Kan, and Yan Wei were panicking. They were already going all out, but unable to suppress Long Chen in the slightest. Hold on, he's not going to last much longer, shouted Huo Lian. Using some unknown method, he began to incinerate his own body, causing his power to leap once more. Huo Lian and the others could tell that they no longer had any chance of defeating Long Chen. But as long as they could hold on a couple more seconds, the unfettered Alsir and Ji Wuming would arrive, then it would still be their victory. As long as they could last a breath's time, they would be able to get away. But during that one breath's time, they couldn't retreat. That wasn't just because they were afraid of Long Chen escaping. It would signify an absolute defeat. One that would be crushing no matter what the circumstances were. They had to endure. Di Feng, Zi Luo, Ji Yui Kan, and Yan Wei also went all out. Not only igniting their own essence blood for power, but also sacrificing a great deal of their vitality to activate their divine items. Split the Heavens 7. For the first time, Long Chen used Split the Heavens in this battle. He didn't even need to accumulate energy. He could unleash it as he wished. Huo Lian, Di Feng, Zi Luo, Ji Yui Kan, and Yan Wei's combined attacks were blown away, and the five of them were sent tumbling back, coughing up blood. Huo Lian's flames had dimmed greatly from the start. Long Chen's gaze turned to Huo Lian, and saw Bear Chi streaked across the air. The flame giant that was Huo Lian was sliced in two. I'm a flame spirit. I possess an undying body. You can't kill me, roared Huo Lian, the two halves of his body merging back together. Long Chen once more slashed his saber, interrupting his merger and cutting him into four. His flames once more dimmed, 
Ha ha ha. It's useless. Even if you slice me into a million pieces, it will only weaken me. You can't kill me. Huo Lian laughed crazily. It seemed that this was the only aspect he could be proud of in front of Long Chen. When did I say I wanted to kill you? Sneered Long Chen. Watch out. The other four suddenly let out terrified cries. A giant flame dragon appeared in the sky, devouring one of Huo Lian's four portions. When that portion of himself was devoured, Huo Lian let out a horrified shriek. He found that his connection to that flame energy had vanished. Being cut in four makes you the perfect size, mocked Long Chen. The flame dragon devoured another portion. Huo Lian had condensed the flame devil body and was made of the purest flame energy. At the start, Yu Ziaoyan hadn't had any hopes of Huo Lian actually managing to condense it, but upon seeing him succeed, Pill Valley had let him devour the majority of their earth flames in order to strengthen him. It could be said that Yu Ziaoyan had once more placed high hopes on Huo Lian, but now his flame devil body had become a fat piece of meat for Huo Long. Huo Lian was terrified. He tried to flee, but his body was still split, and his reactions were slower. As a result, one more piece of him was devoured. Novaloon.com Huo Lian howled. With just a quarter of his energy, he had no power to flee. He cried for help, but Huo Long devoured him without the slightest mercy. Another genius died. Long Chen, face your death. Once Huo Lian was killed, the unfettered Alsir and Ji Wuming finally arrived. Long Chen met them with a disdainful smile. In truth, the two of them had had a chance to save Huo Lian just now, but they had intentionally slowed down a bit. Clearly, they hadn't wanted to save him. Their heavenly fate island and four fate princes had been destroyed. Even if they wanted to create a new sect, it wasn't too likely it could rise once more. This was all the fault of Pill Valley. Heavenly Fate Island only had a few weak disciples left and the two of them. In their hatred, they wished for others to meet an equally miserable fate. The unfettered Alsir and Ji Wuming had just approached Long Chen when a shout rang out. Dragon Blood Cross Slash. A giant cross split heaven and earth in two. It was like the harbinger of death, and the center of it streaked toward the unfettered Alsir and Ji Wuming. The Dragon Blood warriors slaughtering their enemies had suddenly bunched together. Their bodies began to shine, and they formed a giant arrowhead formation. At the tip of the arrowhead was Guo Ran with his golden sabers crossed in front of him. Energy from all the dragon blood warriors converged upon him. A giant cross slashed out, and anyone in its path, whether it was a genius life star disciple or a nether passage elder, as long as they touched it, was blown to smithereens. This was their first time using this move since they had advanced to the life star realm. Every dragon blood warrior was wearing armor that Guo Ran had made, armor which was a perfect set with their swords. Those were all divine items, and their divine runes had been made specially by Xia Chen so that they could all share the dragon blood warrior's world energy and dragon blood energy. Now, this attack became the most thunderous and grand attack to appear on the entire battlefield. Even the unfettered Alsir and Ji Wuming's expressions changed. They were Nether Passage experts of the third step. But even they sensed the threat of death from this attack. Their life and death energy erupted as they defended. Boom. The giant cross of death exploded into blinding divine light. And a powerful shockwave sent even Long Chen flying. As for Ziluo, Di Fang, Ji Yui Kan, and Yan Wei, they were hacking of blood. And Ji Yui Kan in particular almost exploded due to his weaker physical body. Perhaps it was simply his bad luck. But while the others were flying back, Gui can ended up closer and closer to Long Chen. I'll send you on your way. Long Chen had almost coughed up blood from the impact, but seeing Gui can getting closer, he attacked without hesitation. No, Gui can exploded. Another genius dying. His death was truly unlucky. True immortal Jiaoki, the four fate princes, Huo Lian, Gui can. Seven of the Martial Heaven Continent's peak geniuses had been killed. Now, the only ones left were Di Fang, Zi Luo, and Yan Wei. However, the three of them were in a miserable state from the shockwaves of the Dragon Blood Cross Slash. It was unknown if they were even alive. After all, that was an attack containing the power of the entire Dragon Blood Legion. The world was deformed from this one attack. As the dust settled, 
it revealed two wretched figures in the sky. The unfettered Alsir had blood dripping from his mouth. His Daoist robes were in tatters, making him look like a beggar. Ji Wuming was a bit better. He wasn't injured. However, his hair was in disarray. Two third step nether passage experts worked together, but one of them was still injured. One of the neutral camps experts sighed with shock. The unfettered Alsir's cultivation base should probably be a bit lower than Ji Wuming's. Furthermore, Ji Wuming has the Fantasy Star Sword. The difference between them is obvious. The Fantasy Star Sword might have lost a great deal of power due to the destruction of Heavenly Fate Island's Divine Pool, but that damage was more like a slow poison. The Fantasy Star Sword's power and life were slowly dripping away, but right now, it still had most of its power. I'll go kill Long Chen. You eliminate the scum, said Ji Wuming, shooting toward Long Chen. Ji Wuming went off after Long Chen, but it was the Dragon Blood Legion that collapsed upon the unfettered Alsir. Gu Yang was the first to attack. Gu Yang's manifestation was active behind him, and runes revolved around his entire body. The muscles on his arms bulged, and it was like there were serpents wriggling beneath his skin. His spear unleashed immense divine power. Little and scram. The unfettered Alsir was infuriated. The dragon blood cross slash had injured him. If he hadn't been with Ji Wuming, he would be in an even more wretched state. In just a day, he felt like he had gone through countless torments. If he didn't vent a bit, he was sure he would explode. Boom. The unfettered Alsir swung through the air. His life and death energy burst out as he unleashed a full power strike. However, what shocked him was that Gu Yang didn't die. Gu Yang was blown back. His arms were broken, but he was otherwise alive. The neutral camp's experts were stunned. A life star disciple had just received the attack of a third step nether passage expert. Originally, they had predicted that nothing would be left of Gu Yang after that attack. After all, a third step nether passage expert was an existence that stood at the pinnacle of the martial heaven continent. The unfettered Alsir was about to attack again when Sword Chi slashed toward him. His heart shook, and he hastily raised his ruler to block. He was actually only able to block a portion of the Sword Chi. The rest of it continued past his defensive barrier of divine energy and left a foot-long cut on his chest, causing blood to soak his tattered Daoist robes. What terrifying sword intent! The neutral camp's experts gasped. There was no lack of true experts here and they could sense that Yu Zifeng had relied on the will of the sword Dao to pierce the unfettered Alsir's life and death energy. Although it was just a superficial injury, an attack that was able to break through the defenses of a third step nether passage expert was a world-shaking attack. The youngsters today really are terrifying even Daoist heavenly feather side emotionally. Rumor is that the heavenly sword gate has produced two amazing geniuses and those two geniuses are actually a pair of master and apprentice. This Yu Zifeng is the apprentice, while the other one is called Ling Yunzi. He's a monstrous figure that has completely toppled the cultivation world's iron laws. Despite missing his golden cultivation time, he still soared like a shooting star, said an elder. This world was filled with monsters. Many monsters were bearing witness to the event today, but who knew how many of them were still hiding in the dark? As for Yu Zifeng, he was another monster aside from Long Chen. He didn't have the slightest aura of the heavenly deos on him. For a person not blessed by the heavenly deos to be so terrifying, how could those so-called heavenly geniuses live with themselves? The unfettered Alsir's fury soared upon being injured. His hair stood on end like an angry lion, and he smashed his ruler at Yu Zifeng. Die, you're the one who will die. Countless willow branches descended from the sky moving like pythons. The unfettered Alsir's expression changed as he sensed immense danger from those branches. He almost instinctively gave up on attacking Yu Zifeng and tried to charge out from the branches. However, there were too many branches, and more of them blocked his path as he broke them. Although he was able to break through the branches, his expression was ugly. These branches possessed their own life and death energy that was resisting his own energy. Fortunately, he had fled right at the start, or if he had let them surround him, he would have been in trouble. The moment he charged out of the cage of willow branches, two golden giants appeared, smashing giant pillars at him. The unfettered Alsir couldn't dodge. He defended, and those two giant pillars exploded. 
However, his momentum came to a stop, and the willow branches behind him once more crept up. A black light sword suddenly shot out, filled with the air of annihilation. It was Cloud. The unfettered Alsir was hesitating over whether or not he should dodge or block when a wind blade sliced toward him. It was like a crescent moon, so sharp that it sliced apart the laws of space and time. Tang Wanner's attack arrived at the same time as Cloud's. Soul wound in the dream. Soul burial. The unfettered Alsir's eyes fluttered. His eyelids grew heavy. Not good. The unfettered Alsir suddenly bit his tongue, using the sharp pain to wake himself up. At this moment, all the attacks landed. Boom. A huge chi wave blew the unfettered Alsir into the sky. He was covered in blood. Blood runes had appeared on his ruler. He had actually used his own essence blood to power his divine item and increase its defensive prowess. But he was still heavily injured. Two rays of sword chi slashed toward him at the same time. One came from Yu Zifeng, but the other was unleashing crystals to appear in the sky, and a soul chilling cold enveloped the unfettered Alsir. It was Yi Zhikyu. She was also a member of the Dragonblood Legion, and she had joined in now, causing the unfettered Alsir's expression to change. The unfettered Alsir hastily blocked, but Yu Zifeng's sword chi once more managed to ignore his block and strike him. As for Yi's Hikyu, her attack made Frost cover his entire body, and he felt a stabbing cold in his bones. At this moment, Gu Yang's attack arrived. He had already recovered from his injuries. He hadn't even had to do it himself. It was the powerful healers of the Dragonblood Legion that had allowed him to instantly recover. Kill this bastard. We'll make him really unfettered shouted Guo Ran. He had originally been guarding over the Dragonblood Warriors to prevent any other experts from disturbing them, but Xia Chen had finished establishing a grand formation, so he joined in as well. The unfettered Alsir, under their combined attacks, was in a panic despite being a third-step Nether Passage expert. He was surrounded, unable to charge out of their encirclement. On the other side, Long Chen had Evil Moon lazily resting on his shoulder as he looked at Ji Wuming indifferently. Based on your expression, it seems you don't like me much. Ji Wuming's eyes looked like a hungry wolf's. It seemed that he wanted to bite Long Chen to death. That hatred was quite intimidating. However, Long Chen was looking at him indifferently, seeming to not see his anger. Of course I don't like you. Right now, I'm considering how I can make you feel the most pain so that you regret ever being born in this world. Ji Wuming's voice shuddered with rage. He even felt that killing Long Chen would be letting him off easy. He wanted to make sure that Long Chen lived a life worse than death. Because of Long Chen, there would be no more heavenly fate island in this world. Their inheritance, which had stretched on for countless years, had actually ended with Ji Wuming. I feel like we should amicably chat about things. Fighting and killing is meaningless, said Long Chen. Ha ha ha. Now you're afraid. It's too late. Ji Wuming laughed sinisterly. Too late? Well, I was busy with my tribulation before this, and the one who should be afraid isn't me. Look at your unfettered Alsir. He's already being beaten like a dog. The Dragonblood Legion came prepared this time. Every Dragonblood warrior is on the same level as a Nether Passage expert of the first step. As for the captains, they are on the level of Nether Passage experts of the second step and maybe even beyond that. Just look. They are beating up the unfettered Alsir, which is the best proof. Weren't you suppressing the Dragonblood Legion because you were afraid of us rising? Unfortunately, things didn't go as you wished. We still rose, and that means that our enemies will no longer be having a good time, sneered Long Chen. He was saying this not just to Ji Wuming but to all the experts of the Martial Heaven continent, including Yu Ziaoyan and the others. On the battlefield. The Dragonblood Legion had surrounded the unfettered Alsir. Others were unable to charge past their barricade. While the captain level fighters attacked the unfettered Alsir, he tried to charge out several times but failed. He was trapped. The unfettered Alsir, a nether passage expert of the third step, was actually being beaten by a group of life star disciples to the point that he couldn't counterattack. The Dragonblood Legion is absolutely terrifying. They actually have so many powerful experts, and they're so young. Their potential is limitless it's truly terrifying. Perhaps the reason Pill Valley constantly suppressed Long Chen is because they predicted that this day would come. Unfortunately, 
The Dragonblood Legion still managed to grow to this point. Each of them is a monster. If any sect had one of them, it would give them hope of suddenly soaring. Most sects only managed to get one such monstrous genius. If there were two, they would fight until only one was left. Perhaps only a supreme monster like Long Chen can make those monsters follow him with such loyalty. Emotional sighs could be heard. The Dragonblood Legion's name was about to shake the continent. Hill Valley had missed their chance to kill them. At this time, the old man stopped fighting. Yu Ziaoyan refused to fight him directly, and he was too irritated by this combat style. After cursing him a few times, the old man flew back to stand by Ku Jinying and the others. Long Chen had said to make sure that Yu Ziaoyan and the others couldn't interfere. The rest was up to him. Hence, the old man didn't want to waste the effort. He smiled upon looking at Long Chen's unrivaled manner. It was like he was seeing himself in his youth. Ku Jinying. The old man, Yan Nanshan, and the other grand elders were keeping a tight watch over Yu Ziaoyan and the others. As long as they made any moves, they would immediately attack. Yu Ziaoyan and the others didn't wish to act rashly. The four grand elders gave them a sense of immense pressure. Other than Yan Nanshan who was a bit younger, the other grand elders would definitely die if they went all out. So if they were to strike, it would be an absolutely thunderous strike a suicidal attack that aimed to take their lives. While Yu Ziaoyan and the others didn't move, there was one person who refused to stop. That was wild. He was still fighting intensely against the leader of the ancient races. Long Junkang had shouted at him several times to stop as everyone else had also stopped. But Wild ignored him. Long Junkang's expression was dark with fury. However, Wild's attacks were too powerful and random. Long Junkang couldn't predict what he would do, and there were no spiritual Yuan fluctuations either. Long Junkang sat at the top of the ancient races because he was a true expert with endless combat experience. He was proficient in the Xuan Beast's divine abilities and the human race's magical arts, but he had never faced an opponent like Wild, an idiot who relied purely on brute power to randomly swing his club. He practically ignored Long Junkang's attacks looking like he wanted to be beaten. There were several times where Long Junkang had had a chance to launch a heavy blow on Wild, but he couldn't. Wild's fighting style was one where he was happy to be struck as long as he could strike back. The winner would be the one whose body was tougher. Even Long Junkang didn't dare to receive one of Wild's berserk swings. He had thought about it several times but always switched to defense. In fact, once, due to that hesitation, his shoulder was struck and turned into a bloody pulp. Long Junkang was in an awkward position now. He regretted coming out to help the Xuan beasts as he was simply embarrassing himself. He could only defend against these wild and shameless attacks, unless he was willing to be struck. But that would risk his life. How could the leader of the ancient races, a nether passage expert of the third step, really be willing to risk his life just to kill a fool? Although he was infuriated. Long Junkang couldn't do anything. Wild would occasionally take a few bites of true immortal Jiaoki's corpse before continuing to fight. It was like he would never run out of energy. No one came to help him. They were blocked by Ku Jin Ying and the others. If they chose to fight as well, it would definitely be a bloody battle where countless people died. That wasn't what they wanted. They were all stuck watching. Yu Ziaoyan and the others could only hope for Ji Wuming to turn things around Novaloon.com as for the unfettered Alsir. They had no hope for him. They simply wished for him to last a bit longer so that the rest of the Dragonblood Legion couldn't go assist Long Chen. The Dragonblood Cross Slash had been truly terrifying. No one could view the members of the Dragonblood Legion as simple life star disciples any longer. They were too terrifying. If it was a one against one. Yu Ziaoyan was sure that Long Chen would die to Ji Wuming's sword. There was a qualitative difference between the two. The difference between Ji Wuming and the unfettered Alsir didn't stop just at one being a deputy. Ji Wuming was looking at Long Chen. He didn't even bother looking at the unfettered Alsir. Your final words are meaningless. The only thing I'm still pondering is how to make you suffer. Perhaps I'll kill everyone you care about in front of you? I heard your father, mother and little sister are in the wine god palace. Perhaps I should think of a way to lure them out and let them die in front of you as well. A cold smile crept over Long Chen's face. 
He shook his head. You don't need to worry about such things. Do you really think you can beat me? Do you not know that it's still unknown whether or not you'll live to see the sun tomorrow? If it was in the past, Long Chen would be infuriated at such provocations. But this time, Long Chen found it somewhat laughable. Ji Wuming was angered by this indifference. The anger and fear he had expected to see never appeared. He wanted to give Long Chen more pain, but he found that it wasn't happening. His fantasy star sword suddenly lit up. The ignorant have no fear. You will never know how great the power of an inherited divine item is. This power is enough to cause the world to shake. When you destroyed the heaven-suppressing magic sect, it was because their sect leader didn't have the ability to activate the karmic luck within their divine item. Today, I'll let you see just how great the power of a divine item is when it is unleashing the karmic luck accumulated by its sect. Heaven and Earth shook. A starry sky appeared behind Ji Wuming. The world shook as the deos and laws of the world actually converged around Ji Wuming. Ji Wuming is actually unleashing all the karmic luck belonging to Heavenly Fate Island. Long Chen's in danger. This power had nothing to do with his cultivation base. This was the energy that generations of experts of Heavenly Fate Island had accumulated. It wasn't something that a human could block. It would require another core divine item to activate their karmic luck as well. An ordinary sect definitely couldn't do such a thing. After all, that karmic luck decided the rise or fall of a sect but Ji Wuming no longer had such concerns. Long Chen, you are an ant. Go in peace. I'll make sure that everyone you care about is sent after you. Ji Wuming slashed his sword. The sword Qi sliced through the clouds, causing heaven and earth to shake. He eagerly awaited the look of despair on Long Chen's face. He wanted to enjoy that sight. Long Chen pressed his forehead and extracted a drop of blood. He placed that blood on Evil Moon. Evil Moon, I'll undo your seal. If you don't kill him, I'll look down on you for a lifetime. This powerful attack could not be received by just anyone. Of everyone present, only some of the peak experts could receive it. Hence, the people who cared about Long Chen felt their hearts clench. Ignoring the might of the fantasy star sword. Long Chen only focused on the blood on his finger. That was a drop of his purest essence blood, merging with Evil Moon. As a result, a character slowly appeared on Evil Moon, and it began to shake intensely. It was like an evil beast was trying to break free. Long Chen drew over the character with his blood, and it slowly revealed itself to be an immortal character. Shang. Golden light blossomed as a divine and indomitable will spread. This divine aura caused the life star experts to involuntarily kneel on the ground. Even some nether passage experts began to kneel. This is a sovereign's aura. Daoist heavenly feather was stunned. Sovereigns were unrivaled existences on the martial heaven continent. They were leaders, rulers, and heroes who had come to the world to bring peace to chaos, allowing the martial heaven continent to escape its destruction. Each sovereign had been an amazing figure with no equal. They were viewed as protective gods. For a sovereign's aura to appear here, they all knelt down in worship. Is this really a sovereign's aura? How can Long Chen release such a thing? Is he the reincarnation of a sovereign? People shuddered. They didn't want to show disrespect to a sovereign, but they suspected that this was one of Long Chen's tricks. They didn't really believe that he was the reincarnation of a sovereign because all the past generations of sovereigns wore white robes. While Long Chen always liked to wear black, Evil Moon shook. Long Chen finally finished writing the Shang character, which was the seal that Sovereign Yun Shang had left on Evil Moon. Using my blood and soul, let gods and devils in heaven and earth hear my oath. My name is Long Chen, and I call upon the laws of the world to break Sovereign Yun Shang's seal. Long Chen's voice resounded through heaven and earth. The world shook as if it was responding to Long Chen. At that moment, Long Chen seemed to be the master of this world. His word was law, and even the heavenly deos didn't dare to go against him. This mnemonic was the method to undo the seal that Yun Shang had left him. The Shang character grew brighter and brighter until it was blinding, and then it exploded. Once the sovereign seal was undone, an evil, domineering, bloodthirsty, and ruthless aura sword. Ha ha ha, I, Evil Moon, am finally free. Evil Moon laughed wildly. The earth shook uneasily, and everyone's expressions changed. That evil and sinister aura was hair-raising. It seemed that Long Chen had just unleashed some monster. 
Stop laughing and get to work, or I'll be killed, shouted Long Chen. At this time, Ji Wuming finally launched the attack he had been lazily brewing. Kill him. Evil Moon attacked on its own. A giant black blade slashed through the air, meeting Ji Wuming's fantasy star sword. Boom. These two peak divine items smashed together, causing a heaven-shaking explosion. Black light exploded, and the earth was torn asunder. Ji Wuming coughed up a mouthful of blood and flew back. Shocked. Evil Moon had actually relied on its own power to block his attack. As for Evil Moon, it was blown into the distance. Even once Long Chen caught it, he ended up being dragged away by its momentum. Have you made some mistake? Didn't you say that you were some amazing existence that could kill him like killing a chicken? Don't tell me that it was all bragging, raged Long Chen. Shut up. I've been sealed for too long, and that bastard Yun Shang exhausted all my power, not leaving me with anything. Otherwise, I'd have killed this idiot, and he's using the power of karmic luck to boost himself. He's absorbing the very energy of the martial heaven continent, while I'm relying on myself. So being able to draw is already decent. Also, let me remind you that our agreement has come to an end now that my seal is undone. For me to help you now is a favor. Understood? Learn how to be grateful. Evil Moon also raged. Grateful my ass. He's coming back. Long Chen swung Evil Moon, activating his world energy. He found that Evil Moon was too unreliable. All was saying that it could subdue the entire world if its seal was undone. Long Chen had thought that once he undid its seal, he could just sit back and clean up the battlefield. But in reality, this bastard had just been saying some big words. It hadn't recovered its former energy. Split the heavens seven. Long Chen directly used his strongest attack. The two dragon marks on Evil Moon lit up, and a dragon cry rang out. However, what surprised Long Chen was that it was a double dragon roar. One dragon roar came from Evil Moon while another roar came from within Long Chen's body. Evil Moon was actually forming a resonance with the Azure Dragon battle armor. Boom. Evil Moon collided with the Fantasy Star Sword once more. This time the clash was even more violent, and even the Dragon Blood Legion was affected by the shock waves. However, their battle had already ended. The unfettered Alsir was pierced through with willow branches and was in Luru Ion's hands. It was unknown whether he was alive or dead. The Dragonblood warriors hastily retreated in the face of their collision, directly going to Ku Jinying's side. Ku Jinying, the old man, and the others were all stunned that the Dragonblood Legion had managed to handle the unfettered Alsir. Their power had truly surpassed their expectations. One saber image after another came slashing out at Ji Wuming. He was actually forced to retreat time and time again. He, boss really is the boss. No matter how much stronger we get. We can only barely manage to see his back, sighed Guo Ran. Their advancement had made them feel like they had finally shortened the distance between themselves and Long Chen. But now they found that while they had gotten stronger, Long Chen had gotten even stronger. The Martial Heaven Alliance's elders sighed in amazement. Everyone in the Dragonblood Legion was a monster, but these monsters all worshipped Long Chen, an even greater monster. Based on the fact that Long Chen had broken Sovereign Yun Shang's seal, they guessed that Long Chen had some kind of connection to Sovereign Yun Shang. Otherwise, no one in this world was capable of undoing a Sovereign seal. If Sovereign seals were so easy to undo, then the Devil Race from Devil Spirit Mountain would have already attacked, and the Yun Yang World's Blood Race would also have invaded them. The Sovereigns were supreme existences, let alone a Life Star Disciple like Long Chen. Even an existence greater than a peak nether passage expert wouldn't be anything in front of a sovereign. They were all ants in comparison to the sovereigns. For Long Chen to actually have such a connection with a sovereign, just how heaven-defying did his luck have to be? That kind of opportunity was enough to drive people crazy with envy. Boom. The earth shook intensely. Long Chen and Ji Wuming had vanished from sight. As the ground continued to shake. Lava and giant boulders began flying out of the ground. The two of them had actually taken their fight underground. Long Chen, it's not worth it for you to fight like this. How many years has Heavenly Fate Island been accumulating karmic luck? He's not using up much of his own energy at all. As long as you wait a few days, most of his karmic luck will have run out. Killing him then will be easy, shouted Evil Moon. 
they were at a disadvantage in this kind of fight. Heavenly Fate Island had only just been destroyed. Its karmic luck was currently dissipating rapidly. Although it had been gathered over tens and even hundreds of thousands of years, it would only take a few days for half of it to run out. Then in the following months, the remaining half would completely vanish. At that time, the Fantasy Star Sword would crumble. Today, the Fantasy Star Sword still possessed 90% of Heavenly Fate Island's karmic luck. Tomorrow, it would only have 70. The next day, it would only have 60. It would rapidly fade away. Fighting today was completely benefiting the other side. Can you have some face? What happened to your integrity? Is this the dignity of the dark evil dragon race? You showed off so much but you want to just run? You might not care about your face. But what about mine? Demanded Long Chen. Evil Moon was embarrassed and angered. Although its seal was undone, it had none of its core energy. It hadn't expected Yun Chang to not leave him with the slightest bit of it. Evil Moon also didn't want the first show of its power to end on such a lackluster note. But what else could be done? Boom. The ground exploded as Long Chen and Ji Wuming flew back into the sky. Evil Moon's black saber images filled the sky, fighting against the starry sky unleashed by the fantasy star sword. Each attack caused a world-shaking collision, showing people what a world-shaking battle truly was. This world-shaking battle wasn't being fought by two people in the same realm. No, it was a life star expert fighting across realms against a nether passage expert. People couldn't help looking back at Ziluo and the others. Of the experts that had besieged Long Chen, only Ziluo, Di Feng, and Yan Wei were left. However, they felt hopeless as they watched Long Chen fight Ji Wuming. Long Chen was like a giant mountain blocking their path, let alone conquering this mountain. They weren't even qualified to look up at it. The battle continued. Eventually, Ji Wuming laughed upon noticing that after two hours of fighting, Long Chen's aura was starting to fall. Ha ha ha, Long Chen, I have Heavenly Fate Island's karmic luck supporting me. What are you going to use to fight me? Fight with you? No, I'm going to kill you, sneered Long Chen. He raised Evil Moon back onto his shoulder, panting a bit. Their wild battle had resulted in his spiritual yuan dropping. The Azure Dragon battle armor, utilizing his world energy and the five-star battle armor gave him immense power but used up a great deal of energy. Evil Moon in particular consumed much more energy after having its seal undone. Its weight was astonishing. At first, the majority of the energy had come from Evil Moon, but then it had become half and half, and then Evil Moon had run out of energy, leaving most of the burden on Long Chen. Long Chen cursed Evil Moon for being unreliable. He had thought that after undoing its seal, it would be able to dominate these old monsters. Even though he had the energy within his 108,000 stars and his divine ring absorbing energy, he couldn't keep up with this exhaustion. As for Ji Wuming, he was using the karmic luck of Heavenly Fate Island. He wasn't using up much of his own energy. On the other hand, Long Chen had already used up a third of his spiritual yuan. Any more and his combat power would weaken, and he would exhaust himself even more to keep up. Kill me? What a huge joke. I have endless karmic luck supporting me. The world's energy is mine, while you have nothing, sneered Ji Wuming. The distant experts couldn't help shaking their heads at this shamelessness. He was actually fighting a battle of attrition with a life star disciple and even mocked him? He was essentially cheating by relying on Heavenly Fate Island's karmic luck. This wasn't even his own power. Should we attack together? Whispered Gu Yang. What are you worrying about? If boss says he's going to kill him, he's definitely capable of doing it. We just have to watch, said Guo Ran. He might even have more confidence in Long Chen than Long Chen himself. Within the Dragon Blood Legion, Chu Ya smiled faintly. She slowly closed her eyes and formed hand seals. Three verdant leaves appeared behind her. Those leaves glistened brightly, almost seeming to drip energy. Three giant leaves also appeared behind Long Chen. In that instant, he felt his energy rise once more to its peak. Ji Wuming had been planning on capturing Long Chen once he was exhausted. Although the Fantasy Star Sword's energy was also being exhausted by Long Chen's ferocious attacks, it wasn't as bad as Long Chen's energy consumption. Although Heavenly Fate Island had been destroyed, that didn't mean that he couldn't establish his own sect. 
becoming the founder and ancestor of a new power. By catching Long Chen, he would be able to obtain enough for that sect he could use Long Chen as a gambling chip to bargain with Pill Valley and get the resources that he needed. So he hadn't been pressing Long Chen hard for fear that he would run, or the old man and the others would come save him. Split the heavens seven. It was a nice plan. But Long Chen suddenly unleashed a thunderous attack that sent him flying back and coughing up blood. Why bother? Exposing your trump cards for this. Evil Moon sighed. In its eyes, Ji Wuming was essentially crippled. There was no need for Long Chen to force himself to kill him. Even if they just waited a day, Long Chen would be able to easily defeat him. In two days, Ji Wuming would have to flee on sight. In three days, Ji Wuming wouldn't even be able to flee upon seeing him. Evil Moon didn't know what nerve of Long Chen's had been plucked, but he simply refused to wait. Exposing the Wood Spirit Union for this was definitely not worth it. Long Chen ignored Evil Moon's sigh. He knew that he had to kill Ji Wuming no matter what the price. Chu Yao's Wood Spirit Union was even more amazing than before. She had advanced to the Life Star Realm and had created a giant astral space. The Life Star Realm was perfect for wood cultivators. While an ordinary life star expert would have their spiritual yuan increase by 10 or even tens of times due to creating an astral space, wood cultivators would see their wood spirit energy increase a hundredfold perhaps up to a thousandfold. With the wood spirit union, Long Chen's spiritual yuan instantly reached max capacity once more. Even his soul was being nourished and he was completely refreshed. Now you know what I'm using to fight you, sneered Long Chen once more attacking with the seventh form of split the heavens. It was like he didn't even have energy considerations anymore. Ji Wuming was forced back repeatedly and continuously coughed up blood. This is, the experts looked in shock at Long Chen. His aura had clearly been dropping, but now he had instantly returned to his peak condition. It's that girl. Everyone turned to look at Chu Yao who was in the dragon blood legion. Her manifestation was active and within it was an endless river cutting the world in two. The river flowed and surged, unleashing waves of life energy. The battlefield was a ruined land, but the area around Chu Yao was blooming with all kinds of vegetation. It was sprouting out of the ground like it was spring. Only the area around her was a world of thriving life. What amazing life energy. People couldn't help sighing. They had never heard of a wood cultivator that was so powerful. At this time, Yu Ziaoyan realized why no one from the Dragon Blood Legion went to help Long Chen. They had a powerful wood cultivator amongst them that could share energy with Long Chen. Hence, they were there to guarantee her safety. Ji Wuming tumbled back, unable to endure. His fantasy star sword. Startled cries rang out. A thumb-sized nick had appeared in the fantasy star sword. That meant that its karmic luck had already mostly been exhausted. As for Ji Wuming. His own life and death energy was unable to block Long Chen's berserk attacks. We can't let him die. Yu Ziaoyan's expression changed. He charged over. Get back here. The old man had been keeping a close eye on Yu Ziaoyan and immediately launched an attack with the heaven splitting blade. Yu Ziaoyan's expression changed. He immediately gave up on saving Ji Wuming and switched to defending against his madman opponent. He couldn't let the old man unleash any big suicidal moves. However, the others hadn't even had time to move when a giant dragon claw came smashing down from the sky. It was the Silver Drake King. Lai Long had consumed so much Thunder Force from Long Chen's Thunder Force that it couldn't endure it. By creating the Lightning Channel once more, it could let out a bit of that energy so that it could focus on absorbing it slowly instead of simply containing it. This Lightning Channel was very stable but it still wasn't enough to allow the entire Drake King to fit through. However, just one claw was no problem. Ji Wuming howled, blocking with his sword. As a result, the dragon claw exploded, but Ji Wuming was now covered in cracks. Die. Long Chen once more unleashed the seventh form of Split the Heavens. Ji Wuming summoned all his power to defend again. As a result, the fantasy star sword exploded along with its master and Ji Wuming's Yuan spirit was slain along with him, the leader of Heavenly Fate Island, a nether passage expert of the third step, someone supported with a core divine item that was using up its karmic luck to fight, was slain by a life star disciple. The world was silent for a moment, 
Rumbling rang out as nine lightning drakes appeared in the sky. They were the strongest lightning drakes within the lightning field other than their king. Their bodies were now much larger, but the surprising thing was the slight bulge on their foreheads. That was where a dragon's horn was supposed to be. A drake was not a dragon, and drakes did not have a dragon horn. For this sign to now appear meant that they were truly starting to transform into dragons. Originally, they would have never managed to become true lightning dragons in their lifetimes. But it was the divine nature of Long Chen's tribulation that had caused this transformation. They had not only gotten stronger, but their intelligence had also grown. The nine drakes unleashed a united dragon cry, which was like rolling thunder. They coiled behind Long Chen, glaring at Yu Ziaoyan and the others. It seemed that if Long Chen gave the order, they would attack. Long Chen was soaked in blood, yet he appeared mightier than ever. With the nine drakes behind him, he seemed like a god, a killing god. Yu Ziaoyan, bring your people away and scram. Today is a joyous day, celebrating the rise of the Dragon Blood Legion. I'm not in the mood to kill people, so you can decide whether you want things to stop here or to fight, shouted Long Chen. Looking at Long Chen who appeared like a killing god, people couldn't help muttering to themselves that if he looked like this when he wasn't in a mood to kill, what would he look like when he was? The old man was smiling brightly at the fact that Long Chen had slain Ji Wuming. He returned to his camp. Fuck. Today was really satisfying he had never been so proud in his life. It was like Long Chen's glory was his own. Yu Ziaoyan's expression was dark. He looked at the nine lightning drakes and the channel behind them. The silver drake king didn't come out. He then looked at the dragon blood legion and Pu Jianying and the others. There's no need to look. Our power is definitely greater than your sides if we go to war. Your losses will definitely be greater than ours. Most importantly, the martial heaven alliance's hearts are united while your alliance is nothing more than a clobbered group. Hurry up and decide whether or not we're fighting, sneered Long Chen. Long Chen, count yourself vicious today. However, don't get too pleased. Yu Ziaoyan actually turned and left, with the other experts following. Yu Ziaoyan and the others left, and cheering burst out of the side of the Martial Heaven Alliance. They had won. This was the Martial Heaven Alliance's first head on strike back after being constantly suppressed by Pill Valley and the others. This was a complete victory. Pill Valley's side would no longer dare to be as arrogant as before. Countless disciples flocked over to the Dragon Blood Legion, not bothering to conceal their worship for them at all. The name of the world's number one Legion was set in stone, with no one being able to shake them from that position. What an actor. They really got scared away by you. Evil Moon sighed. Long Chen had actually tricked everyone. In truth, fighting so intensely against Ji Wuming had not been as easy as Long Chen had made it out to be. Each exchange had resulted in a backlash. His skeleton was now covered in cracks, and those wounds could be likened to a curse from the karmic luck. That was the energy of the world, and even life energy could not immediately wipe it out. The most important thing though was that combining the power of his world energy, the Azure Dragon Essence Blood, and Evil Moon was not something he was used to. Cracks also appeared on his 108,000 stars. If things had continued, he would have been crippled. If his astral spaces exploded, then his path of domination would come to an end. However, Long Chen had acted like he was in peak condition, scaring away Yu Ziaoyan. As long as Yu Ziaoyan had chosen to fight, Long Chen would have instantly been exposed. But Yu Ziaoyan actually hadn't fought. Evil Moon couldn't understand that decision. TCH. Do you really think Yu Ziaoyan is capable of ordering around that rabble? You're overthinking it. They are only allied together for profit. When the profit exceeds the danger, anyone would want to fight. But when the profit is equal to the danger, people hesitate. And when the danger exceeds the profit, who would still foolishly charge in? As for why I didn't bother killing Di Fang, Zi Luo, and Yan Wei, it was to leave them the option of retreating. Di Fang is Mo Nian's prey, while Zi Luo and Yan Wei are no longer qualified to be viewed as opponents by me. The destruction of Heavenly Fate Island has caused the best intimidation factor that I could hope for, and unless they are 100% confident in killing me and the Dragon Blood Legion, those people won't attack. They know that if we escape, We'll become their living nightmares. 
Having destroyed Heavenly Fate Island, I've already achieved my goal here. The various powers on the continent have all been hurt and are tired, while the Martial Heaven Alliance's morale is soaring. If Yu Ziaoyan forced a fight, he would have had an 80% chance of failure, and there would have been no way back from that failure. I understand him, and he will only take action when he has an 80% chance or more of success. That's why I'm sure that even if I had slapped him in the face, he still would have endured. Chortled Long Chen. I don't believe it, said Evil Moon. You don't believe it because you don't understand people's hearts. Yu Ziaoyan's ability to endure is greater than you imagine. Based on my understanding of him, he won't bet all his chips on one thing. He definitely has backups. So he is definitely unwilling to stake everything on this gamble. After saying that, Long Chen couldn't bother arguing with Evil Moon because Ku Jianying and the others were coming over to him. Haha, <laughs> little fellow, for a disciple like you to appear in my heaven-splitting battle sect, I can rest in peace even if I die. The old man laughed and slammed his hand on Long Chen's shoulder. As a result, Long Chen paled. It felt like a million needles were stabbing his shoulder. You old bastard, learn how to hit lighter. After such a battle, Long Chen's definitely injured, raged Ku Jianying, pushing aside the old man. The old man was immediately embarrassed. He had been witnessing Long Chen's strong side and hadn't thought that he was injured. Long Chen, you really are a dragon amongst men. No wonders Hikki refuses to take up my divine ice palace. At this moment, Daoist Heavenly Feather also walked over. The neutral camp's experts followed. Greetings. Senior Long Chen hastily bowed. That was Yi's Hikiu's master and his senior. He couldn't be rude. As a result of this bow, he was filled with even more pain. Here, Daoist Heavenly Feather extended a hand, helping Long Chen up. The instant that she touched him, a black and white whirlpool enveloped Long Chen. Life and death energy. The Samzara Dao Ku Jianying and the others let out startled cries. Daoist Heavenly Feather truly had reached the fourth step of Nether Passage. She could control Samzara energy. Before this, it had just been a guess. Long Chen felt some kind of energy circulate within his body, erasing the curse of karmic luck. Once it was gone, the primal chaos space's recovery abilities kicked in, making him feel much more comfortable. Many thanks. Senior don't worry about it. All I did was wipe away the injury of the karmic luck. That's not enough to be touched by karma as you're relying entirely on yourself for the rest, said Daoist Heavenly Feather. I hope you can treat my disciple properly. Hearing this, Yi's Hikiu blushed slightly. Daoist Heavenly Feather had always treated her as her own daughter, but she had refused to join the Divine Ice Palace, instead only recognizing her as a personal master, but not accepting her position. She held Daoist Heavenly Feather's arm, not saying anything. You don't need to worry about that. I'll make sure that no one can bully her, including myself. Long Chen patted his chest. Good. However, Zhikyu still has to return with me one more time. I have to pass down the rest of the Divine Ice Heavenly Scripture to her. After she learns it, she can accompany you forever instead of keeping this old woman company, said Daoist Heavenly Feather with a faint smile. Master, Yi Zhikyu finally couldn't hold back her tears. It's fine. It was just a joke. Say goodbye to your boyfriend. We have to go. Daoist Heavenly Feather wiped away her tears. A master was like a parent. It truly was such a case. Sometimes, a master might be even more than a parent. A parent passed down their bloodline, but it was the master who passed down their life's learning. For a person to encounter a good master was difficult. For a master to find a good disciple was even harder. This kind of opportunity could be looked for but couldn't be forced. Long Chen. I. Yi's Hikiu didn't know what to say. She looked at Long Chen. She had never been good with words. Don't worry, things will get better. Go with your master. I'll come find you with senior apprentice sister Kulator. Comforted Long Chen. Little brat, you're looking for another beating. Demanded Ku Jianying. Yi's Hikiu left sadly, waving goodbye to Long Chen. Meng Chi. Chu Yao, Tang Wan'er, and the others. The two of them vanished. Little brat, if you call her senior apprentice sister, doesn't that mean you have to call me uncle-in-law? The old man suddenly smacked Long Chen on the butt. It was a very light beat, 
as the old man was in a good mood. He didn't even remember to hate Pujinying. Who dares to beat my brother Long? A giant bone club came swinging at the old man, eliciting startled cries. The old man jumped in shock and hastily blocked with his cane, only to be blown into the distance. You dare to hit my brother Long? Wild roared angrily, charging over. Long Chen jumped, hastily holding him back and shouted, Wild, don't be rude. He's on our side. In his current state, Long Chen was powerless to hold Wild back. Wild dragged him into the distance before finally stopping. On our side? Then why would he hit you? We're just playing around. Hurry and apologize to the old man, said Long Chen. Old man, I was wrong. How about this? If you feel angry, you can beat me a couple of times too. Wild squatted on the ground and covered his head. Seeing that position, Long Chen sniffed emotionally. Back in the Phoenix Cry Empire, Wild had been like this as well. Simply letting people beat him without hitting back. If anyone was angry, they could beat him to vent. It had been many years since then, and the two of them were no longer who they were back then. But those feelings had not changed. Wild was still that simple large fellow. The old man came crawling out of the ground. Just now, he had been caught off guard. Wild's power was absolutely terrifying. The old man had a temper, but seeing Wild acting like a child that had made a mistake, he couldn't bear to actually strike him. For Long Chen to have such a brother, the old man was happy. Wild was so powerful that he had fought with pure brute strength against the leader of the ancient races, Long Jun Kang, without being beaten. That kind of combat power was enough for him to be arrogant. All right, I'm fine. Child, get up. The old man helped Wild up, rubbing Wild's arm that was thicker than a normal person's waist. The old man sighed. This Wild was like a simple child, but he was second only to Long Chen in the Dragon Blood Legion. Seeing that the old man wasn't angry, Bao Buping and Chang Hao had a thought and laughingly pulled Wild over. Bao Buping said, Brother, our old man has a bad temper. He might say he's not angry but really be furious inside. Then how can I make him not mad? Wild immediately felt bad. Let me tell you, what you have to do is beat him, and then he won't be angry. In fact, he'll be so happy that he praises you. Remember, just raise your club and beat him, ignoring whatever he says. I hear two miserable screams rang out as a black cane smacked two buttocks. The two of them went flying into the clouds. Little bastards, you want to scheme against me? Just wait until we get home. I'll make sure flowers bloom on your butts, snorted the old man. Bao Buping and Chang Hao's sinister appearances had drawn the old man's attention and having eavesdropped, he had heard everything that they said, he would make sure they learned what an old man's fury was all about, through this mess, everyone couldn't help laughing, the heaven splitting battle sect was truly a marvel of the cultivation world, Long Chen, congratulations on making your name shake the continent, in the future, I doubt there will be many people who dare to go against you, at this time, Hu Fun came up, thank you, but I sense that while I'll have fewer battles to fight, their scale will be much greater. I wonder if brother who wants to join my dragon blood legion? If everyone was together, wouldn't that be livelier? Long Chen smiled. Even Long Chen felt a sense of danger from Hu Fang, who had an indescribable air around him. Long Chen couldn't see through him. Evil Moon had once more told him that in this world, the only two people that it couldn't see the golden fate lines of were Long Chen and Hu Fang. Long Chen's golden fate line simply didn't exist, so Evil Moon always said that he was a marvel that shouldn't exist in this world. As for Hu Feng's golden fate lines, they would appear and then fade away, sometimes being strong and sometimes being weak. There was no way for it to get a clear reading on them. Hence, it couldn't estimate his true power. Hu Feng courteously said, Brother Long. I was just a scholar who had a coincidental encounter that turned me into the heir of the gambling heavenly Tao. In truth, I have no aspirations. I just wish to cultivate peacefully and continue passing on the inheritance of the gambling heavenly Tao to future generations. As for dominating the martial heaven continent, I don't have such ambitions brother who, these words of yours are off. As the chosen heir to the gambling heavenly Tao, you have your own important destiny. The rise and fall of the heavenly deos is not something people can avoid. 
A scholar exists to talk reason with others, but cultivation exists to smack reason into unreasonable people. Brother who, if you really wished to be free, you would have become an unfettered scholar immersed in literature. You wouldn't pay any attention to outside matters. However, you chose to cultivate. Isn't that because you were forced to? I am the same. Everyone else is the same. Everyone hopes to live with dignity and get along with everyone else so that we can live in peace. But reality is cruel. The reason I, Long Chen, have to get strong is because I have no other choice. If I wasn't strong, I would have been killed. If you wish to live happily on your own, you will most likely be disappointed very quickly, because troubles will continuously come to find you until you are unable to handle them, said Long Chen confidently. Of course he was confident. Although he couldn't get a reading on Hu Feng's power, his years of experience allowed him to judge Hu Feng's character. Hu Feng might talk in a refined and non-combative way while having a scholar's lonely pride, but he was actually very righteous deep inside. Otherwise, he wouldn't have saved people that he didn't know in the eastern Xuan city, even clashing against true immortal Jiaoki. Many thanks for your words, but I would rather live free and unconstrained, said Hu Feng a bit apologetically. That's fine. I trust that soon there will come a day when we can fight side by side, said Long Chen, not forcing the matter. Hu Feng bowed slightly to Ku Jianying and the others, and left, watching Hu Feng leave. Ku Jianying sighed. Whoever can obtain his help would be capable of taking over half the continent. Long Chen, work hard on pulling him in. Pill Valley is doing everything they can to get him on their side. Let him be. Whether he's a friend or foe will be decided by a single thought of his. I'm not afraid of any enemy, said Long Chen. Exactly. You need this kind of heroism. Who cares about the gambling heavenly Dao? If he becomes an enemy, just hack him with your blade. The old man greatly approved of this attitude. HMPH. What is an obstinate old man who only knows how to run headfirst into a problem jumping into this conversation for? Snorted Ku Jianying. Clearly, Ku Jianying was still deeply hurt by the old man's anger toward her over their misunderstanding. Seeing him acting like he had completely forgotten about it, her anger flared. Aya, Long Chen's heart skipped a beat. Before he could say anything, the old man roared. You're the one who expelled Long Chen for the Martial Heaven Alliance. You might have done it because of your worries for the people on the continent. But what about Long Chen and his Dragonblood Legion? They're still children. But you treat them like this? Aren't you worried about affecting their sharpness and their Dao hearts? Don't act like your big picture is what matters most all the time. All I know is that I won't let my children suffer like that. Everyone sees what Long Chen has done for the Martial Heaven Alliance. Yet this is how you treat him. If Long Chen wasn't so hardworking, this decision of yours would have thrown the Martial Heaven Alliance into a chaos that it would never be able to recover from. Yet you wish to scold me? I'm not talking to you any longer. We're leaving. The old man swung his sleeve and left gloomily. Boss Bao and the others could only dejectedly follow. Bao Buping and Chang Hao made a gesture to Long Chen, indicating that when he had time, he could come to the heaven-splitting battle sect to drink. Long Chen helplessly looked from Ku Jianying to the old man, not knowing what to say. The old man had an unyielding character, but he was also very protective. If someone dared to bully his child, he would go all out against them. Today had been a good day, and this rare chance for the two of them to get along had ended in shouting. Even when Long Chen had called Ku Jianying senior apprentice sister Ku was a joke, the old man had called himself uncle-in-law. The meaning behind that was clear. He was willing to let things go, which was extremely rare for the obstinate old man. However, Ku Jianying had once more brought up that subject reigniting the flames of his anger. Even Long Chen was angry now. Why couldn't the two of them talk properly? Did they have to hurt each other with such words? Why bother? At this time, the neutral camp's people also began to say goodbye. Hu Jianying had to suppress her emotions and bid them farewell. Qi Fengxu and Qi Xuan also came over to say goodbye to Long Chen. Qi Xuan held on to Long Chen for a long time, not wanting to leave. She wanted to drag Long Chen back to the heaven-reaching ancient castle as a guest. In the end, it was Chi Fengsu who dragged her away. Tang Wan'er glared at Long Chen. She didn't say anything, 
but the meaning behind that glare was clear to anyone who saw it. She would be looking for a complete explanation once everyone was gone. Long Chen was speechless. He had been thinking of how to resolve the old man's squabbles with Ku Jinying. When troubles appeared on his own side as well, he also saw that Lu Ruiyan was currently whispering something into Tang Wan'er's ear. Based on her expression, it definitely wasn't anything good. She was probably intentionally sowing dissension. Once the neutral camp's people began to scatter, Long Chen noticed that a certain person never appeared. Zi Yan had left without anyone noticing. He had wanted to say thanks to her. If it hadn't been for her taking action in the Yun Yang world when they were being chased down by the blood race, they would have been in trouble. But Zi Yan had left just like this. For some reason, Long Chen felt a bit empty inside. With everyone else gone, Ku Jinying led everyone to the Martial Heaven Alliance's headquarters. Countless experts came out to congratulate them. The majority of those people had just been sitting on the sidelines the entire time. Now they revealed their hypocritical smiles once more and subtly indicated that they would stand on the side of the Martial Heaven Alliance in the future. Even some sects that had betrayed the Martial Heaven Alliance had sent a few people to test the waters. As a result, whether it was those righteous experts that had just watched without doing anything or those that had betrayed them, they were all shooed away. Originally, many people within the Martial Heaven Alliance had been thinking of accepting them. Even if they couldn't be used for anything important, it was good just to not have them stand on the side of Pill Valley. If they were forced, they would become enemies. However, Long Chen had firmly opposed that action. The Martial Heaven Alliance had gone through a tough tribulation to remove this trash from their midst. What was left behind was something stronger. If they were to accept them back amongst them, all their pain and suffering would have been in vain. Who would poison themselves again after cutting off the part of them that was poisoned? He told those people to scram. If they couldn't stand together with the Martial Heaven Alliance, then they wouldn't be protected by the Martial Heaven Alliance. Long Chen's decision was very domineering, but it was fully supported by Ku Jinying. After shooing those people off, the Martial Heaven Alliance celebrated for three days. When Ku Jinying and the others asked why Long Chen had risked everything to kill Ji Wuming, his response was that Ji Wuming was the weakest in terms of combat power amongst the leaders of the major factions, but he posed the greatest danger. Without Heavenly Fate Island to consider, he had no misjivings. Ji Wuming was capable of doing anything now. If he couldn't kill Long Chen, he would do anything he could to bring Long Chen pain. He might even charge into the Eastern Wasteland and destroy the Branch Sects and the Phoenix Cry Empire. He might even charge into the Grand Shia Ancient Nation. Once a person was crazy, that was when they were the most dangerous. As for Yu Xiaoyan, Zi Wentian, Di Long, and the others, they had their own businesses and families to take care of. They didn't dare to act like that. But Ji Wuming did. That was the reason Yu Xiaoyan had wanted to save Ji Wuming at that time. Regretfully, he didn't succeed. Only then did Ku Jinying, Evil Moon and the others understand why Long Chen had gone to such trouble. For three days, Long Chen mostly had a bowl of wine in his hand. He drank and drank, celebrating with the disciples of the Martial Heaven Alliance. The elders kept watching, letting the disciples properly relax. They were the hope of the continent. After three days, Long Chen looked at a person sitting by himself looking into the distance. Long Chen smiled faintly and pushed his gourd of wine toward him. Mo Nian. Drink some more. A hand caught the gourd. Mo Nian was startled. How did you recognize me? I used the Dark Knight race's stealth art. Mo Nian had gained a new technique recently while tomb robbing. It was the technique he was currently most proud of, and his efficiency in tomb robbing had increased immensely from it. He had been hoping to scare Long Chen with this move, but Long Chen noticed him as soon as he was a few hundred meters away. Long Chen smiled faintly. He had noticed Mo Nian because he had been adjusting his 108,000 stars, seeing if he could connect them to heaven and earth. That's because your wretched air disturbed me. Seeing his expression, Mo Nian immediately understood Long Chen was being sarcastic. Drinking a mouthful of wine, he spat out, Wretch, are you shouting your own name? Long Chen shook his head. Fuck, you're such a conner. Mo Nian laughed. Long Chen let me tell you about a certain something. Don't get mad though. 
Why would I get mad? He, this blessing came very quickly. So quickly that I'm unprepared. Ah, how do I say this? Mo Nian suddenly became bashful. Damn, based on your wretched appearance, I'd say that you've brought calamity onto some family's younger daughter. What nonsense. Am I, Mo Nian, that kind of person? Fine, I'll tell you the truth. But first tell me that you won't get angry. Tell me first, said Long Chen impatiently. All right, that matter between myself and Yi Lingxian, I might be about to pull it off. So don't get angry. Really? I don't believe it. He, I know you have some interest in her, but my attraction is simply greater than yours. Ah, but don't blame me for not being a good brother. After all, that flower had no owner, and we have to use our own abilities. Wait, wait. First, let me say this. I have no romantic feelings for Yi Lingxian. Heaven and Earth can testify to that, with the sun and moon bearing witness. I also understand Yi Lingxian's character, and she is absolutely loyal to the Martial Heaven Alliance. She will not marry out to anyone. She has already married the Martial Heaven Alliance. Your only option would be to marry into her family, but considering your old man's temper, if you dare to consider it, he'll sever your five limbs. Last. And this is the aspect that I find most inconceivable. Are you telling me that she is actually attracted to you? I always thought that she liked the kind of person who's steady and mature. As for you, I'm not trying to give you a blow. But I really don't believe it. Long Chen looked up and down Mo Nian, and then shook his head. He really couldn't believe it. Based on his rich experience, this boasting of Mo Nian's was very likely false. He, you're viewing me from the angle of a man. So how could you tell how attractive I am? Don't think that you're so attractive just because you have so many beauties. Let me tell you, each woman's eyesight is different. Yi Lingxian likes my type. So what can you do about it? Mo Nian laughed. Just look at this. You don't want to accept it? Well, too bad. Mo Nian took out a rolled up little scroll. There was even some fragrance coming from it. It seemed there was something written on it. Do you see? This is the love letter that Yi Lingxian personally wrote to me. That smiling appearance of hers when she gave it to me. I will never be able to forget it in this lifetime. Declared Mo Nian. Taking a deep breath of the scroll's fragrance. That appearance gave Long Chen chills. He even got goosebumps. However, he was truly startled to find that this fragrance was truly the same as Yi Lingxian's. What was going on? Had Yi Lingxian gotten water in her head? Open it and look. Let me see just how amazing my brother Mo Nian's divine pickup abilities are. Long Chen wanted to see what Yi Lingxian had written. Am I a badass? Definitely a badass. Am I handsome? All right. What is all right supposed to mean? If your face was skinnier, it'd be better you're saying I'm not handsome? Fine. I'm not letting you see what's written inside. Hey, don't pull it. You'll tear it. Fine. I'll let you see. Mo Nian jumped. And only when he saw that Long Chen wasn't going to pull it did he slowly unfurl a corner of it. Even his hands were trembling. Why are you so nervous? Asked Long Chen. How can I not be nervous? Who knows what's written inside? What? You didn't even read it before bragging to me? You made it sound like you were about to get married tomorrow. You wretch. Raged Long Chen. Isn't it because I view you as a real brother and wanted you to be here when I read it? Mo Nian tactfully pivoted. Give it up. As I see it, you didn't have the courage to even read it. Guessed Long Chen. Are you even my brother? Be nicer. Fine. Let's see what's inside. Hopefully, the heavens will bless me with a beautiful woman. Mo Nian prayed before slowly unfurling it. A character quickly appeared. As. As. Not good. What if it says as if she would like me? Mo Nian's heart shuddered. Keep going. Pressed Long Chen. If, the second word was if, Mo Nian was about to think about what it could mean when Long Chen grabbed at the scroll. Mo Nian hastily protected it. Don't rush me. Mo Nian slowly opened the rest of the scroll. Seeing the next few words, Mo Nian laughed delightedly. As long as you're well, it's like spring. Ha ha ha, Long Chen. Do you see? The meaning is all too clear. Ha ha ha. Mo Nian was so emotional that his whole body shook as he looked. Long Chen looked at the rest of the scroll. He had an urge to say something, but he didn't. He, Long Chen, do you submit? Do you see? 
This is my attraction. Just because you couldn't achieve it doesn't mean that I can't. A. Why are you looking at me like that? Mo Nian finally sensed something off. Long Chen pointed at the scroll. Keep reading. There should be more. Mo Nian looked and realized that he hadn't reached the end. Continuing to open it, another word entered his gaze. Thunder. Mo Nian was dumbfounded. As long as you're well, it's like spring thunder? Isn't this a letter of hate? Seeing Mo Nian staring at him directly, Long Chen hastily shook his head. Don't look at me. To use your words, the meaning is all too clear. You have failed. Mo Nian wilted, looking like he wanted to cry. He howled in grief. I spent so much effort on her though. I kept fighting despite continual setbacks. That kind of toughness should have allowed me to succeed based on probability. Could such a thing be measured by probability like that? Long Chen was forced to pat Mo Nian on the shoulder. If failure is the mother of success, then you might be infertile. Your comfort makes me want to die. Wept Mo Nian. Brother, there's a good place of feng shui 3,000 miles northeast of the city. Face the south and look at the three bowls of water before you. The azure dragon is to the left. The white tiger is to the right. It's a beautiful place to be laid to rest. That's all I can help you with. Sighed Long Chen mournfully. Wretch. Raged Mo Nian. Are you shouting your own name? Long Chen looked at him disdainfully. TCH. I'm not talking about this with you any longer. Mo Nian began to walk away but was grabbed by Long Chen. Stop the act. I know you don't have the slightest sincerity in pursuing Yi Lingxian. Even I could see it. So do you think she didn't notice? You only did it to act badass and have fun. And don't act pitiful now. Tell me what your plans are for the future, said Long Chen. Mo Nian had always liked to be free. He definitely didn't want to be restricted. And so there was no way he could end up with Yi Lingxian. He had purely been joking by pursuing Yi Lingxian. And Yi Lingxian didn't mind playing a joke back on him. Things between them could end here. What could I possibly do? You're already so powerful. I have to hurry up and restore the five element sun hunting bow, or I won't be able to fully awaken my manifestation. I don't want you to get too far ahead of me. I'm also missing my family. I want to go back, and it just so happens I can bring a heavenly Tao fruit back to her. I suddenly find that she is the only one who treats me best in this world. Although she's fierce, I'm always in her heart. Sighed Mo Nian. The her he was speaking of was naturally his fiance, Lu Zongying. Long Chen. Do you think that women with the Ying character in their name are vixens? Asked Mo Nian suddenly. Are you looking to die? Long Chen jumped in shock, hastily looking around. Only upon seeing that there was no reaction did he quietly curse. If you want to die, don't drag me down with you. This is the Martial Heaven Alliance. Ah, my mistake. I'll pay attention next time. Mo Nian also jumped upon realizing what he had said. If Ku Jin Ying had heard this, the two of them would definitely be beaten. That's called being unyielding and domineering. Such people are definitely perfect as friends. They'll accompany you through life and death, fighting alongside you. But as companions, well, it's all right. Long Chen could only comfort him this way. Thinking of the squabbles that erupted every time the old man interacted with Ku Jin Ying, he could only sigh sorrowfully. Fine, perhaps this is just my fate. I accept it. I'm going now. Let's meet again. Mo Nian rose. Yes, let's meet again. Western wretch. Long Chen also rose. Wretch, are you shouting your own name? Once Mo Nian left, a disciple came to Long Chen to report that Ku Jin Ying was looking for him. That shocked him. She couldn't possibly have overheard it, right? Long Chen swore that if Mo Nian had conned him again, he wouldn't let him off even in death. What are you so nervous about? Ku Jin Ying looked at Long Chen oddly. Hearing that, Long Chen immediately relaxed. It seemed that he had overthought it. Ah, I was just nervous that you would beat me because of the old man's matter, said Long Chen. HMPH, that old bastard. I've known him for the better part of my lifetime. If I got angry at everything he did, I'd have long since died from rage. I can't be bothered with him, snorted Ku Jianying. Inside, Long Chen thought to himself that while it was true that the old man's temper was fierce, Ku Jianying wasn't any better. They always had to have thorns in their words. Even if one of them had a good temper, 
they still wouldn't be able to get along over time. The two of them always blamed the other for their problems while never reflecting on themselves. For a person to look at themselves clearly was truly difficult. Alliance head. Did you need me? Asked Long Chen. Yes. We have several things to discuss. Hu Jianying nodded. Why would you need to discuss things with me? You're the Alliance head. And I'm just a little disciple. Long Chen smiled. Hu Jianying shook her head. Your tribulation and battle have shaken the continent. You slew your fellow peak geniuses. Destroyed Heavenly Fate Island whose inheritance stretches back countless years. And even killed two island masters. You don't even realize this. But your influence might be even greater than mine. In just ten years. The entire Martial Heaven continent might belong to you. So don't act so bored all the time like Mo Nian. You should bring out your charisma. Long Chen hastily waved his hand. Already knowing her goal. That's enough. Alliance head. I don't have such aspirations. If I wasn't forced to, I wouldn't have stood out like I did. So don't try to use the name of all lives or the people to talk me around. The reason I am brothers with Mo Nian is because the two of us are both little rogues happy with just the basics. We're also very lazy and can't accept such immense responsibility. There's no way for me to compare to Yi Lingxian in that regard. Nor do I wish to sacrifice so much. I see how you care for me because of the old man. And you see the trust I have in you. As we're so close, there's no need to mince words. I, Long Chen, am not that kind of person. So you shouldn't waste the effort to make me into that. Seeing Long Chen shake his head like a rattle even before she was done speaking. Hu Jianying couldn't help sighing. After hesitating for a long time, she had discussed it with the higher-ups of the Martial Heaven Alliance to consider making Long Chen the leader of the Martial Heaven Alliance. His rallying power was simply much greater than Yi Lingxian's. The leader of the Martial Heaven Alliance didn't necessarily need to be incredibly powerful but they did need great charisma and rallying power, the ability to make others follow them into death. Long Chen was perfect for that, and when she had suggested it, the majority of people had supported this choice, but the four grand elders had immediately shaken their heads. Yan Nanshan had told Hu Jianying to give up on that, saying that Long Chen would not accept being the alliance head. He was a wild horse that no one could subdue. He pursued freedom. Something he would never have as the Alliance head. As expected, even the position of leader of the Martial Heaven Alliance was unable to move Long Chen. Are you really not going to consider it? Asked Hu Jianying. I'm not jumping into that hole. I never wanted to be some savior of the world. I just want to live in peace with my wives. Fishing, hunting, having a group of babies. Wouldn't that be a much better life? But you have a relationship with Sovereign Yun Shang. The sovereigns were always the protective gods of the martial heaven continent. On their own, they pulled against the tide of destruction, saving the continent from a crisis. This is your responsibility when I encountered Sovereign Yun Shang. He never said anything about that. I feel like it's fine for me to be like this. You, you actually saw Sovereign Yun Shang. The sovereigns were the strongest and most mysterious existences in this world. They had left behind countless legends but had then vanished without a trace. Some people said that they had died, while some said that they were hiding. There were countless guesses. However, anyone who could obtain anything that a sovereign had left behind would be viewed as someone who would have amazing accomplishments in the future noveloon.com Long Chen had actually even seen Sovereign Yun Shang. In her shock, Hu Jianying completely forgot about her previous matter. Yes, I suppose. We chatted a bit and played chess. Then he gave me Evil Moon. He told me to eat and drink properly and maintain a strong body. He didn't mention anything else, said Long Chen. Nonsense, cursed Hu Jianying. She refused to believe that. Actually, the first part was true, but Hu Jianying assumed that Long Chen was hiding some kind of secret. After all, this matter was related to the sovereigns and couldn't be randomly talked about. It wasn't convenient for her to pursue this topic. Long Chen, I called you over to discuss things that are happening outside. Due to us refusing those opportunists and traitors, the majority of them have gone to Pill Valley's side, said Hu Jianying gravely. Yu Ziaoyan has once more made a move. Long Chen was surprised by this. Those people shouldn't be so reckless as to join Pill Valley that easily. 
being refused by the Martial Heaven Alliance should have made them even more cautious. Hu Jinying nodded, sighing. When it comes to intelligence, I can't compare to Yu Ziaoyan. Perhaps you're the only one who can match him. Our sect leader is definitely not inferior to him in that regard, said Long Chen quickly ending. That change of topic right there. The sect leader he referred to was Li Xiangxuan. When it came to intelligence, the only one Long Chen admired was Li Xiangxuan. Yu Ziaoyan might be difficult to deal with, but that was only because of his position. If Li Xiangxuan was standing in an equal position, Yu Ziaoyan wouldn't necessarily be Li Xiangxuan's match. With Li Xiangxuan in the Martial Heaven Alliance, there was nothing for Long Chen to worry about. So he quickly stopped Hu Jinying. Hu Jinying glared at Long Chen for a moment, feeling like he was a wily old fox who couldn't be conned. Three days after we refused those people, Pill Valley sent out word that any disciples of sects allied with Pill Valley could enter Pill Valley's Brahma secret realm for tempering, said Hu Jinying. The Brahma secret realm? What damn thing is that? Long Chen was startled. Didn't Pill Valley only possess the Heaven Dragon Flame region? Where did a Brahma secret realm come from? The Brahma secret realm is one of Pill Valley's secrets. It's said that it is a legacy that their god Lord Brahma left behind before becoming a god. As for whether that's true or not, there's no way for us to know. There are countless precious medicines and beasts within it, and it is a sacred land to Pill Valley. Pill Valley was only willing to reveal this secret to steady their side's hearts after they took such immense losses in the previous battle. One aspect is compensation to them, while another reason is to draw over people from the neutral side. As long as the neutral camp's people swear to never stand beside the Martial Heaven Alliance, they will also be allowed to enter the Brahma secret realm. Yu Ziaoyan seemed to have countless moves up his sleeve. The Martial Heaven Alliance had only just won a victory when he made his next move, instantly stabilizing his side and even drawing in more of the neutral camp's people. Is the Brahma secret realm really related to Lord Brahma? Is Pill Valley really willing to share their god's inheritance with other people? Long Chen frowned, thinking that this wasn't usual for Yu Ziaoyan. What about the sect leader? What does he say? Li Xiangxuan said that this move is very strange and that he can't see through it. However, this might be Yu Ziaoyan's only way to steady the hearts of the large factions on his side, said Hu Jinying. Lord Brahma's inheritance? Long Chen had an urge to go. He still didn't know much about the Pill Sovereign's memories. However, the intense disgust he had for Lord Brahma and Fallen Danite came from deep within his soul, and so they should be related to the Pill Sovereign's memories. The Pill Sovereign's memories had a close link to the Nine Star Hegemon body art as well, but he knew little about either. If he wanted to figure it out, he had to go to the Brahma secret realm. Has the Brahma secret realm already been opened? asked Long Chen. Not yet. They have announced that it will open in one month because they are still waiting for the Pill Fairy, their gods chosen, to fully awaken. They need her power to open the Brahma secret realm, said Hu Jinying. Her. Long Chen's heart pounded hard. The warm smile of the Pill Fairy appeared in his mind. It made him think of past events. He couldn't help sighing. Why did she have to be Yu Ziaoyan's daughter? With Yu Ziaoyan being his mortal enemy, they would definitely have a battle to the death one day. It really was a case of fate toying with people. Apparently, the Pill Fairy has already reached the last step of her inheritance. Once she succeeds, she will become Pill Valley's divine daughter and will be blessed by the god's power. At that time, no one will be able to match her within the same realm. Perhaps this is one of the reasons that Yu Ziaoyan retreated. You are currently unrivaled in the same realm, but his daughter might be able to kill you. In fact, your current fame might even have been boosted intentionally by him so that when his daughter kills you, Pill Valley will rise far above anyone else, said Hu Jinying. Yu Ziaoyan's scheming was extremely frightening. She warned him, you must be careful of the Pill Fairy. Once she becomes the Divine Daughter, her entire character will change. The will of the God will influence her mind. Don't think that your past relations with her will make it so that she won't kill you. I understand. Long Chen nodded. He had heard a bit about this god inheritance. The so-called divine sons and divine daughters were servants of their gods. They were only loyal to their god. Sometimes, 
Some things couldn't be avoided no matter what. Long Chen was already used to it. The future would come no matter what. The news of the Brahma secret realm rapidly spread thanks to Pill Valley's efforts. Practically everyone knew of it, and countless experts began to look forward to its opening. Originally, Long Chen's tribulation and the ensuing battle that had resulted in the deaths of Ji Wuming and countless heavenly geniuses had greatly set back Pill Valley's alliance. Their morale received a heavy blow. Yu Ziaoyan had even been told to scram by Long Chen, and he had listened. Just as everyone thought that the Martial Heaven Alliance's rise was set in stone, while Pill Valley and the others would be unable to do anything to them, the news of the Brahma secret realm caused the wind to change. The title of a divine daughter shook people's hearts. It was no wonder there hadn't been any news of the Pill Fairy for so long. So she was receiving a god's inheritance. The Pill Fairy had originally been a peak heavenly genius blessed by the heavenly deos. If she had god power supporting her as well, using that god power to control the Brahma divine diagram and the Danite furnace, just who would be able to fight her? People guessed that the reason Yu Ziaoyan had left under Long Chen's threats was because he was leaving Long Chen to the Pill Fairy. Regardless of the reason, the continent finally started to grow lively again. Pill Valley and the others no longer dared to cause trouble with the excuse of looking for Long Chen. Even if Long Chen were to walk down the street, no one would dare to touch him. As for the so-called arrest warrants that had been put out for him, those became an absolute joke. The Clear Wind City returned to its original state. Countless people were walking along the streets, and small businesses opened their doors once more. Things were no longer so tense. Long Chen was strolling through the streets with Meng Qi, Chu Yao, Tang Wan'er, Cloud, and Lu Ruian. They were looking through the marketplace. Other than Lu Ruian who was as icy as ever, the others were very excited. Cloud was especially excited, amazed by everything new to her. She held Tang Wan'er's hand, asking questions left and right. Meng Qi and Chu Yao were holding Long Chen's arms, smiling. It seemed that they had forgotten the feeling of strolling through the streets ever since they had stepped into the cultivation world. Long Chen felt ashamed at this. By following him, they had spent all their time in cultivation and fighting. They had given him their best years, and now just a simple stroll was enough to satisfy them. As a man, this made him feel vexed. As long as you're by our side, it's a blessing. As long as you're well, it's like spring, said Men Chi softly seeming to read his thoughts. Good. There was no thunder at the end. Long Chen couldn't help chortling. What thunder? Asked Meng Chi. When Long Chen told them what had happened to Mo Nian, they laughed. Tang Wan'er had to support herself or she would fall down laughing. Ah, let's keep this matter to ourselves. If everyone learns of it, especially Guo Ran, Mo Nian will definitely bite me the next time we meet, said Long Chen. Family shame shouldn't be spread. Just having the family know of it was enough. Long Chen, look at Mo Nian. He knows how to write love letters to people. Why haven't you made any moves in that regard? You're even inferior to Mo Nian. Teased Tang Wan or TCH. Love letters are so low grade. Only used to trick children. I wouldn't bother with writing down my love for you. I'd rather show it to you in person. Long Chen glanced at Tang Wan or's curves. That gaze of his immediately made Tang Wan or redden. She wanted to run, but if she avoided it, it would be saying that this was a weak point. She stood up straight and righteously said, Pervert. Meng Qi and Chu Yao also blushed. Cloud didn't understand. While Lu Ruian acted like she hadn't heard anything, Chu Yao, Meng Qi, and Tang Wan'er had long since given their hearts to Long Chen. However, due to various reasons, they hadn't taken the final step. They had sworn to wait until Yi's Hikia was with them once more. However, it seemed that reality had changed faster than that. More women had popped up by Long Chen's side, so now they didn't even know what to do. It wasn't as if this was an easy topic to discuss. There was still some time before Yi's Hikyu finished receiving the Divine Ice Palace's inheritance. However, once she was back, things would become awkward. Hey, don't be so dirty-minded. I was just saying that after we finished strolling through the streets today, we can go see my parents and little sister, said Long Chen. Long Chen, Meng Qi, Chu Yao, and Tang Wan'er immediately became nervous, especially Meng Qi. Don't worry, 
My parents are very nice. They won't make things hard on you. Guaranteed Long Chen. Despite his comforting words, the three of them couldn't help being nervous. They weren't even in the mood to keep strolling. Just at this moment, a voice rang out from around the corner. Guest, you are looking at my shop's supreme treasure. A true and authentic lightning dragon whip. Legend is that it was created by a lightning dragon's bones. The price is 2,185,000 spirit crystals. But it just so happens that this is the 500th anniversary of my shop. So if you want it, I can deduct 5,000 spirit crystals. Lightning Dragon Whip? Long Chen and the others were startled. The so-called Lightning Dragon was not a true dragon. It was actually a kind of snow lizard that lived in lands of bitter cold. Its spine was very tough and possessed powerful cold energy. When it was fully matured, it was a 10th rank magical beast. Its spine could not only be refined into a weapon, but it could also be used as a precious medicinal ingredient. Long Chen looked over, only to see one man in a store recommending a whip to another person. When he saw the whip, he couldn't help shaking his head. How was that a lightning dragon whip? It was clearly an ordinary lizard spine that had been embedded with ice crystals. However, when he saw the person being conned, Long Chen laughed. It was actually Guo Ran. Guo Ran wouldn't fall for this, right? It's clearly fake, whispered Meng Chi. As a beast tamer, she was clearer on that than anyone else. I doubt it. Otherwise, Guo Ran would be too stupid, muttered Tang Wan Er. Guo Ran had originally been strolling the streets with an unpleasant expression. Then someone had suddenly come to sell him something. He took a look at the whip. 2,185,000 spirit crystals reduced by 5,000 spirit crystals? Do I look like someone lacking those 5,000 spirit crystals? Said Guo Ran disdainfully. Hearing that, the seller was delighted. Ah, this little one misjudged you. It seems you're definitely I'm lacking 2,180,000. After saying that, Guo Ran lowered his head and continued walking. He had also seen that it was a fake item. That seller was dumbfounded, while Men Chi and the others laughed. Boss, it was only now that Guo Ran noticed Long Chen and the others. He walked over. Long Chen and the others had changed their appearances to avoid causing a ruckus, but those familiar with him could recognize him based on his aura. What's going on? Were you beaten? You don't look good, questioned Long Chen. Guo Ran's appearance was very strange. I've been very unlucky these past two days. The day before yesterday, I ended up falling asleep and having a nightmare. I dreamt a bunch of people beat me, startling me awake. When I realized it was a dream, I went back to sleep, only to dream of those people again. They shouted at me, you dare to come back and then I woke up again. Sighed Guo Ran. Meng Chi and the others laughed once more. Long Chen wasn't too surprised. The dragon blood warriors were all under immense pressure, and normally when they cultivated, there was no way for them to sleep. Only by drinking until they were drunk could they relax enough to dream. Although Guo Ran was already very powerful, his inner heart was still weak and cowardly, which was why he had such a dream. That's not all. I also ran into something vexing just now said Guo Ran. But you didn't fall for the con, asked Tang Wan Er. Not that, something before that. There's a building, the spirit cleansing medicinal pools. They claim their baths can completely relax someone. So I went in, said Guo Ran. What? Was the pool not clean? Asked Tang Wan Er. No, actually, let's not talk about it, sighed Guo Ran. Hurry up and tell us. It's annoying when people only say things halfway raged Tang Wan Er. It's embarrassing. When I went in and asked the price, they said that the man's bath costs a hundred spirit crystals, while the woman's bath costs ten thousand spirit crystals. I said that it was a robbery, but the host asked me whether I wanted to go to the man's bath or the woman's bath. After hesitating since I've never been to a woman's bath before, I, I, I went in to take a look only to see a pool full of men. They cursed me, cursing me for being another man and making them even more crowded. I was actually conned. Guo Ran covered his face pitifully. Now even Long Chen laughed. Fool, you even jumped into such a hole. How can I be at ease with you leading the Dragon Blood Legion? It's not me being a fool. It's that they're too crafty. Tell me, what happened to people's integrity and sincerity? Clearwind City is a con. 
cried Guo Ran. You deserve it. Who asked you to be a pervert? Good thing you disguised yourself first, or it'd be embarrassing if others recognized you, said Tang Wan'er without the slightest sympathy. For men, this is normal. Just don't fall for it next time. Long Chen magnanimously patted Guo Ran on the shoulder in a consoling manner. I'm planning on leaving for a few days. Be careful and supervise everyone's cultivation. Don't let this victory get to people's heads. Our enemies retreated, but it's not a true retreat. They have only taken a single step back to accumulate energy for the next strike. Once everyone's had a chance to relax, make them focus again. Don't let them get drunk on other people's worship, said Long Chen seriously. Although the Dragonblood warriors were already incredibly strong, they were still young. Being surrounded by the disciples of the Martial Heaven Alliance and their worship, there was danger of them growing overconfident. If that happened, it wouldn't be long before the Dragonblood Legion fractured. So Guo Ran, Gu Yang, and the others had to occasionally give them a blow so they continued to work hard. After giving instructions to Guo Ran, Long Chen led the women onto a transportation formation. They went straight for the Grand Xia ancient nation. The capital of the Grand Xia was flourishing more than ever. Of the four ancient nations of the Grand Xia, Grand Chu, Grand Zhou, and Grand Han, only three remained. The Grand Han ancient nation had been destroyed because of Long Chen. Standing in the capital of the Grand Xia, Long Chen felt various emotions. Back then, he had been given the title of the National Protector, Great General Long Chen. However, it seemed that he had left before even having a chance to pick up his salary. Past scenes appeared in his mind. The building over there had once been the Blood Kill Hall's stronghold. He had fought with Xia Luo against the experts of the Blood Kill Hall there. Hey, uncle, where is the Guangji Hall? A man that was passing by paused to ask Long Chen a question. Go forward, and turn left on the 11th road. Past three bridges there will be a mountain. Go around it and you'll arrive. Long Chen pointed. That man nodded and went away according to his directions. Big brother. Hello. May I ask if you know how to get to the Guangji Hall? A woman now came up to Long Chen. Turn around. That building behind you is it? Said Long Chen. Thank you. Big brother. The woman thanked him and turned around. Long Chen. You're so evil. Meng Chi and the others. Who were behind Long Chen. Laughed. That pitiful fellow was definitely going to get lost thanks to Long Chen's directions. HMPH. Calling me uncle is one thing, but he wasn't even polite. This'll teach him a lesson. Laughed Long Chen Noveloon.com CM Long Chen didn't want to startle anyone by his arrival at the Grand Xia. He went directly to the Wine God Palace, and only there did he and Meng Chi reveal their true appearances. A disciple from the Wine God Palace naturally came to greet them. Meng Chi and the others were a bit nervous at being in such a place. More disciples of the Wine God Palace began to appear, greeting them. They all felt great reverence for Long Chen, not because of his cultivation base or position, but because his knowledge in medicinal wines had greatly benefited them. As they crossed the mountainous path, they arrived at a small manor. There was a woman reading off a scroll, and in front of her was a girl solemnly listening and following along. Seeing that girl, Long Chen smiled warmly. That was his little sister, Long Xiaoyu. She had grown up quite a bit since their last parting. She took more after their mother. She was very obedient and seemed like a well-educated daughter of a noble family. But there was a hint of naughtiness within her as well. Although she was solemnly reciting something, she was secretly playing with something in her hands at the same time. Long Chen couldn't help thinking how he had been quite a bad child as well when he was young, making his teachers fume and causing his mother to scold him. As for the woman teaching Xiaoyu, Long Chen recognized her. She was a life star expert of the Wine God Palace, and she had helped him when he had been leaving the city. How could Xiaoyu's secretive actions really escape her observation? She just didn't expose her. Xiaoyu, within this verse, what does it mean when it says the heart must have no agitation, that you must be like a mountain and see, that even heaven and earth cannot destroy you, asked the woman. I know, it's saying that we have to concentrate all our focus and energy, like a tall mountain that cannot fall, like a great sea that never dries up, even the power of heaven and earth cannot destroy us, 
It's an expression of fighting against fate, said Xiaoyu very obediently. The woman nodded. The movement of the heavenly deos has set a fate for every being, but fate can be changed. If you want to obtain more, you have to go against your fate. Although you might not succeed, if you don't try, you definitely won't succeed. Xiaoyu, tell me, what do you think about this? I want to be a strong person like my big brother, said Long Xiaoyu. What because my brother is my mom and dad's pride, and the pride of our Phoenix Cry Empire. I want to be someone my parents can be proud of as well. The little girl raised her fist, looking exceptionally adorable. The people Long Xiaoyu encountered, other than her parents, were mostly from the Wine God Palace, with a few people from the Grand Xia's Imperial Palace. To not make her feel lonely, the Imperial Palace often sent over a few children the same age as her to play with. Xia Yanchang, Xia Yaoluo, and the others also often came to look after her. That was why what she knew about Long Chen mostly came from other people's mouths. The Grand Xia was a nation within the cultivation world, and its people felt great worship for Long Chen. Many of the stories about him had been turned into legends. Then considering what stories the children might pass to Long Xiaoyu, she had felt even greater worship for her brother. Do you miss your big brother? I do. Then I'll use a magical art to let you see your big brother. How's that? Really here? Close your eyes. The woman smiled and covered Long Xiaoyu's eyes, slowly turning her around. You can open your eyes. I'm afraid I won't see him. I don't want to be disappointed. Long Xiaoyu actually didn't dare to open her eyes. However, in the end, her eyes slowly opened. She saw a man in black robes, his eyes bright as the stars, with a smile warmer than the sun. Big brother, Long Xiaoyu, after a moment of stunned shock, suddenly ran over to Long Chen. Haha, <laughs> Xiaoyu, did you miss me? Long Chen laughed and hugged her. I missed you a lot, big brother. How did you get here? I don't know either. I was just strolling through the sheets when clouds gathered in the sky, and a ray of light enveloped me. Then I appeared here, said Long Chen. Wow, my teacher is so amazing. I want to be able to summon you like that too. Then you have to listen to her and work hard, said Long Chen, pointing to the paper man she was playing with in her hands. Only then did she notice that she had exposed this paper man in her excitement. She blushed, turning around to apologize to her teacher. But her teacher had already left. Here, Xiaoyu, let me introduce you. These are your future sisters-in-law. Long Chen presented Xiaoyu to Meng Qi and the others. Little sister, don't listen to your big brother's nonsense. You can just call us big sister in the future, said Meng Qi, glaring at Long Chen for a moment. Wow, big sisters, you're all so beautiful, exclaimed Long Xiaoyu. Meng Qi and the others laughed. Long Xiaoyu was actually quite smart and adorable. Meng Qi and the others were already starting to fall in love with her. After talking a bit more, Long Chen asked about their parents. Long Xiaoyu said that their mother was weeding the garden, while their father was making wine. Long Chen was startled. Only later when he asked some disciples of the Wine God Palace did he learn that his father had actually taken up the banner of the Wine God Palace and started learning how to make wine. Although he was only a titular disciple, it was still shocking. After all, Long Xiangxiao had been a military man the empire's greatest general that had fought on the front lines. For him to be able to have the calm heart the wine god palace required to make wine was quite shocking. They walked through the mountains, arriving at a small little area. There was a field full of vegetables, and Mrs. Long was currently using a hoe to weed. The wine god palace did not lack food, but Mrs. Long always felt that it was better to have something to do. These vegetables kept her busy, seeing Long Chen. She was incredibly emotional. She was about to speak when she saw Meng Qi and the others. Kier, Mom. Meng Qi hastily went up, completely red. She was originally Long Chen's fiance, so calling her mom was only natural. Good child. The two of you have ended up together in the end. Ah. Quick. Let go. I'm dirty. Mrs. Long only noticed how much dust and dirt was on her after hugging Meng Qi. Mom. Don't worry about it. Chu Yao also came up. Your princess Chu Yao Mrs. Long became even more delighted. Mom, I'm Tang Wan'er. Remember, 
Tang Wan'er also came up, not knowing what to say. Good, 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 good children. This isn't the place to talk. Let's go inside. Mrs. Long was more excited than anyone. Originally, she had been worried about Long Chen being at such an age and still not having a family. Now, he had brought back so many women, all beautiful fairies. It was too bad that she only had two hands and couldn't hold them all. To Long Chen, she said, Chen Er, go call your father out of his wine cellar. Drag him out of his wine barrel so we can have a proper family dinner. Mrs. Long was so delighted that she actually shoot off Long Chen, enthusiastically getting to know Meng Chi and the others. Even Long Xiaoyu didn't follow Long Chen. She was pulled away by Meng Chi and the others. Helplessly, Long Chen could only ask where the cellar was and go by himself. The cellar was located under a mountain. The temperature, humidity, and density of spiritual qi were all perfect for wine. All the wine god palace's disciples had their own wine cellars. When he entered the one belonging to Long Shiang Xiao, a faint wine fragrance came out. It was faint but very pure. It had only been a few years, but his father was already capable of making such wine? Long Chen was amazed. There was a certain realm within this wine that he couldn't pinpoint exactly what it was without tasting it. He quickly saw a figure busy sealing a jug. When Long Chen got closer, that person turned around. Seeing Long Chen, a warm smile appeared on his stalwart face. Father and son smiled at each other. That smile contained all their emotions. Sometimes, the relationships between men were just that simple. You came at the right time. Come and try out my wine. Long Shiang Xiao's appearance hadn't changed even after so many years. In fact, due to his lack of stress, he looked even younger. All right, but you have to hurry back. There are guests, and it seems mom doesn't like the fact that you're making wine. Long Chen smiled and received a few jugs of wine. Ah, your mom, she can never stop worrying about anything. I'm used to it. There are guests? Looks like you've had some accomplishments Long Shiang Xiao guessed something. Dad, is this really your wine? It's not bad. Before this, I just drank the wine without realizing that there's such a profound essence within the wine Dao. To tell you the truth, making wine is truly addicting. It's like painting. You express your life's experiences and comprehension within the wine. Tasting it is immersing yourself in the maker's life. That kind of feeling of accomplishment isn't something that outsiders can understand, said Long Shiang Xuan. As long as you're happy, Long Chen smiled. He had already caused them to lose their original lifestyles twice due to his rise. So he was happy that they were satisfied with their new lives. Long Shiang Xiao returned to their home and couldn't help being surprised after seeing Meng Chi, Chu Yao, Tang Wan'er, and the others. He hadn't expected Long Chen to bring home so many. When they all called him dad, he smiled delightedly. As a result, even after searching for a long time, there wasn't the slightest gift he could give them to welcome them into their family. Mrs. Long was smiling brightly the entire time. Meng Chi, Chu Yao, Tang Wan'er, Cloud, and Lu Ruyan were all top beauties. She was delighted by her son's skill. She had Meng Chi and the others rest while she prepared the food. Mrs. Long wasn't a cultivator, and although Long Chen had given her some medicine to keep her in good health, she still needed to eat. When Meng Chi and the others tried to help, she shooed them off, refusing to let them do such mundane work. Long Chen took out a few scarlet blood spirit fish for Long Shiang Xiao. Before coming to the Wine God Palace, Long Shiang Xiao had spent quite a few years secluded in the mountains and had roasted quite a few good fish. Preparing the food would take a while, so Long Xiaoyu dragged Meng Chi and the others to play hide and seek. The sound of laughter constantly rang out from that side. Long Chen said that he would come back for dinner and left to go to the rear mountains. This place was the Wine God Palace. After seeing his parents, he had to see the high priest, or it would be rude. Fatty, passing by Tu Kian Chang's house, he let out a shout upon hearing the snores coming from inside. Haha, <laughs> little fellow, you've come. Tu Kian Chang smiled. I have something I need to do first, but I'll come back to find you in a bit, said Long Chen. HMPH, I thought you were here for our 300 round match. Don't you feel ashamed of waking people from their dreams for no reason? Demanded Tu Kian Shang. 
his smile vanishing. He had already taken out the wine jugs. I was afraid you drank so much that you would pee yourself in bed. That would damage your reputation. Laughed Long Chen while walking past Tu Kian Chang's side making. Tu Kian Chang go somewhere between laughter and tears. Long Chen quickly arrived at the high priest's residence. Even without a disciple to report his arrival, the high priest had already come out, waiting for him. Greetings, high priest. Thank you for your help. Long Chen bowed. Last time, the high priest had appeared and stopped the old man's life and death exchange with Yu Ziaoyan. Although he had great confidence in the old man's combat power, Yu Ziaoyan was the master of Pill Valley and had countless trump cards. If something happened to the old man, Long Chen would regret it very much. It can't count as help. I'm ashamed to speak of it, said the high priest with an amicable smile. He was always like a kindly elder without any of the arrogance that an expert of his level normally possessed. In Long Chen's heart, only such a person was a true expert. How can you say that? If it wasn't for your intimidation, the martial heaven continent might already be in chaos, said Long Chen. You're wrong. It wasn't intimidation but simply the truth. Based on various signs, the dark era is truly about to descend. Regretfully, the current martial heaven continent's experts are like a plate of loose sand. They can ignore the very continent's safety just for a little temporary profit to themselves. Perhaps this great era will truly be the end, sighed the high priest. Is it really so serious? asked Long Chen. Perhaps it's even more serious than you think. Geniuses are rising like spring bamboo after the rain, indicating that we've entered the great era, a prosperous time for us to grow. As for Pill Valley's Pill Fairy, she is receiving a god's inheritance. Once she succeeds, the continent's chi flow will once more change. It will cause a chain reaction. The arrival of the divine daughters and divine sons will ignite the continent's remaining chi flow. Geniuses and monsters will be born to face the dark era. If we can survive the dark era, then the continent will have a chance to undergo nirvanic rebirth. If we can't, then it will be destroyed. Isn't it said that in the past dark eras, a sovereign will always appear to bring peace to the chaotic world? Yes, in the past, a sovereign always appeared with the dark era. The sovereigns were existences that rose to face this tribulation. Their power dominated those in the same realm. But the sovereigns all started their rise during the great eras. Any other so-called geniuses could only sigh that they were born at the wrong time, as the sovereign suppressed them all. However, during this great era, other than you, there is no shocking and amazing figure amongst the human race. As for you, there is no chance for you to become a sovereign, sighed the high priest. Why is that? First, you like wearing black clothes, while the past sovereigns all wore white. White represents redemption, hope, and holiness. So the sovereigns were all existences that every race revered. That is a kind of power that surpasses races. But black represents death, despair, and slaughter. Completely contrary to the sovereign's will to save all lives. Let alone subduing all races. You can't even subdue your own human race. The majority of experts in the continent are your enemies. So how are you supposed to lead the continent? Other than that, your spirit bone has been excavated. Your spirit blood has been extracted, and your spirit root is gone. There is no way for you to become a sovereign sprout. Perhaps what I'm saying is a bit difficult to hear and accept, but they are facts. So you should prepare yourself, warned the high priest. Prepare for what asked Long Chen. If no sovereign appears in this era, then the martial heaven continent's destruction is essentially set in stone. If a sovereign does appear, then you will very likely die because the sovereigns suppressed all their enemies. This is fate. No one can contend with the sovereign Long Chen couldn't help bitterly smiling. It seems that neither of those options is good. That is true. I'm telling you this so you can prepare. If the continent is destroyed and you want to live, you need to be ready. Otherwise, it will be too late, said the high priest. Long Chen understood. The high priest wanted him to prepare a way out. If the continent was destroyed, he had to come up with a way to make sure that he didn't die with it. The martial heaven continent's destruction would mean the deaths of billions of lives. It was an unimaginable calamity. Is the dark era really so terrifying probed Long Chen? Each time a dark era has descended, it has injured the core of the martial heaven continent. 
almost destroying it. You can imagine just how terrifying such tribulation is, said the high priest. Many thanks for your warning. I understand, thanked Long Chen. In truth, there was no difference between knowing and not knowing this. Perhaps he could bring a few people with him to the spirit world. But if the Martial Heaven continent was destroyed, how long would the spirit world be able to last? And most importantly, would he really be able to accept running? Perhaps he might be able to accept it. But could the will of the pill sovereign accept it? If a sovereign did appear, then it would be all right if their temper was good. But if they didn't get along with Long Chen, what would Long Chen do? Wouldn't there be a fight to the death between them? Long Chen's good mood at seeing his parents again ended up vanishing due to the high priest's words. However, learning about this now was better than later. If the continent's hearts could be united against the outsiders, then perhaps there would be some hope. However, that was only a dream. The two of them chatted a bit longer. The high priest gave Long Chen a few jugs of wine that improved his mood. Of course, he didn't accept them for nothing. He immediately handed over 18 of his largest scarlet blood spirit fish which the high priest happily accepted. After obtaining the wine, Long Chen's heart grew brighter. Perhaps it should simply be described as the followers of the wine god put it. If there's wine today, drink it. If there are worries tomorrow, worry about them tomorrow. Long Chen returned home. As a family, they ate around a table. Mrs. Long and the others were amazed by the taste of the scarlet blood spirit fish. Now it had become Meng Chi, Chu Yao, and Tang Wanner's turn to move vegetables onto Long Chen's plate, making Mrs. Long laugh. After eating dinner, they prepared for bed, only to be dumbfounded. Mrs. Long had prepared a single big bed for their room. While there was space for the six of them, it was going to be awkward. Mrs. Long stealthily whispered in Long Chen's ear, whether or not you can give me some grandchildren after sleeping together with these five fairies will be up to your abilities Long Chen immediately understood. But the most embarrassing thing was that his mother had forgotten that these fairies were powerful cultivators who could easily hear her whisper. Meng Chi, Chu Yao, and Tang Wanner instantly turned red and turned away, not daring to look at Long Chen. The room only had one giant bed. Then the question was, how should they sleep? Meng Chi. Chu Yao, and Tang Wanner had already grown familiar with Long Chen. Although they hadn't gotten to that last step, some vague touching had been achieved. However, there was now also an innocent cloud and an icy Luruian. I'll sleep next to big brother Long Chen. Cloud was still like a child and didn't have as many taboos. Be careful of him eating you, warned Tang Wanner. I don't believe it. Big brother Long Chen doesn't eat people. Only wild does said Cloud without understanding what Tang Wanner was indicating. Wanner, Meng Chi glared at Tang Wanner. The pure Cloud was being led astray by Tang Wanner. I'll sleep next to Long Chen. Unexpectedly, Lu Ruian actually volunteered to be next to Long Chen. As a result, Long Chen slept in the middle, with Cloud, Meng Chi, and Tang Wanner to his left, and Lu Ruian and Chu Yao to his right. What are you looking at me for? Once the lights were out, Long Chen found Lu Ruian staring at him. It's nothing. I'll just quietly keep watch over you, said Lu Ruian indifferently. Damn. So it was no wonder Chu Yao and Meng Chi had been laughing stealthily. So Lu Ruian was present to keep an eye on him and make sure he didn't try anything questionable. They stayed in the Wine God Palace for three days. Long Chen once more had a battle with Fatty too, but he was amazed to find that the Fatty's skills in the finger guessing game had improved. Who knew how he had trained, but in their battle, Long Chen won some and lost some before the two of them collapsed from drinking. During this time, Long Chen also went to the Grand Xia's Imperial Palace to see the Emperor Xia Yuyang, the Crown Prince Xia Yunfang, Xia Yunchang, and Xia Yaoluo. Xia Yaoluo in particular was no longer the pampered and unreasonable princess. She had matured and now acted refined and graceful, but for some reason, Long Chen felt like he liked the old her more. Xia Yaoluo's eyes rippled when she saw Long Chen. It seemed that she had many things that she wanted to say, but she didn't say them in the end. She merely smiled and raised a cup of wine to him. There were many things contained within this cup of wine, but as for what they were, Long Chen didn't know. Perhaps even Xia Yaoluo herself didn't know. Xia Yanchang was still the same as ever. 
He hadn't grown reserved just because of Long Chen's power, something Long Chen was gratified by. When Long Chen asked Xia Yunfeng how the situation with the ancient nations was recently, he was silent for a moment before saying, while the Grand Xia, Grand Chu, and Grand Zhou are flourishing, the Grand Han almost destroyed itself with its internal battles. However, in the past few months, their internal battles suddenly stopped. The curious thing was that based on our investigation, there was no interference from Pill Valley. Did you not think about dividing the Grand Han's territory? asked Long Chen. Xia Yunfeng shook his head. Brother Long, taking over the territory might be easy, but none of the ancient nations want to accept the Grand Han's commoners. We'll only accept some refugees affected by the internal battles inside the Grand Han and give them a place to recuperate. The Grand Han's people believe that the universe started with them, and that it's only natural for others to treat them well. Even in the territory we gave to the refugees, problems are constantly sprouting. To help the elderly and young, we sent over emergency relief resources, but there were so many of them in the end that we couldn't afford the cost. So we gave them seeds and farming tools so that they could provide for themselves. But instead of farming, they want to make the space we gave them their own territory. Brother Long, tell me, don't you think they're stupid? Xia Yunfen couldn't help sneering at their foolishness. They're such marvels Long Chen couldn't help being amazed. Xia Yunfen said, it can't be blamed on them. It's simply the result of the Grand Han's imperial family's indoctrination. They instilled the sense in their people that they were above the human race, constantly making up legends to fool their people. Hence, their commoners are the victims. Nevertheless, this kind of brainwashing can't be fixed in just one or two generations. So to maintain the nation's stability and unity, the other three ancient nations don't want to take them in. The only worrisome thing is that the Grand Han's chaos suddenly calmed down. Furthermore, some rumors say that the protective gods of the Grand Han have awakened. It seems someone is creating legends for the Grand Han once more. Keeping the people ignorant in times of chaos was the best way to keep the peace. Making up some protective gods could make the people feel hopeful and fill them with vigor. There were several examples of such things occurring in the Grand Han's history. But for educated people aware of history, such a thing would be useless. If the Grand Zaya's leaders tried such a thing on its people, they would be scoffed at. Protective gods. Long Chen also sneered. When had this world gained so many protective gods? Rather than getting stronger themselves, they hoped for others to protect them? The next morning, Long Chen stealthily brought Meng Chi and the others away. They were afraid of the sadness from leaving, so they decided not to say goodbye. After leaving the Grand Xia, Cloud transformed into her true form, bringing them speeding away. After advancing to the 11th rank, Cloud speed even amazed Long Chen. Divine light flowed across her feathers, bringing her speeding away. The space ahead of them seemed compressed. Cloud speed was starting to break the laws of space time. After less than a few hours of flying, they arrived at an empty land. Cloud landed here and unleashed the power of her bloodline. A passageway appeared in the air. Cloud brought Long Chen and the others into the passage. The scene before them changed. They entered a desolate desert without the slightest signs of life. Heaven and earth rumbled. One large figure after another appeared in the sky. They were all experts of the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrow race. This place was actually one of their strongholds. Those experts transformed into human form. Their leader was a graceful and beautiful woman, which released immense pressure. She was actually a powerful 12th rank Xuan beast. In total, 80 experts of the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrow race had come. The woman bowed deeply to Long Chen. Respected experts of the human race, thank you for your grace toward the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrow race. We will never forget this in our lifetimes. This woman was the stronghold strongest expert. The others knelt on the ground. You're too courteous. Cloud has been with us since she was a child, and she saved us from crisis multiple times. We're a family, and you're our family as well, said Long Chen. Cloud was a member of the Dragonblood Legion, and her matters were the Dragonblood Legion's matters. There was no need for others to thank them for such a thing. At this time, other cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrows began to fly over. 
but they were younger and unable to transform yet. They curiously looked at Long Chen and the others. Long Chen said, I came here today to tell you that there is no need to hide any longer. The great era has come, causing the world's qi flow to erupt. Hiding within minor worlds will affect your growth. If you continue like this, you will miss your best time to soar. As for the Xuan beasts, as long as I say the word, they won't dare to touch you for at least a while. That's why I hope you can call out the entire cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race to grasp this opportunity. I will leave Menchi here so that you can probe the inside of the myriad spirit diagram. The divine abilities of your cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race are inside. It will allow you to raise your power as fast as possible. The current cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race was forced to hide. They spent the majority of their time within their secret strongholds. Most of those strongholds were in desolate minor worlds that weren't suitable for cultivation. Only by entering the martial heaven continent could they properly cultivate. Before this, they had been forced to be secretive upon entering the continent, afraid of being noticed by the experts of the Xuan beasts. If noticed, they would rather fight to the death than try returning to their strongholds, as they didn't wish their enemies to know where the strongholds were. So despite being such a powerful race, the cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race was suppressed and forced into such a state. Long Chen wanted to bring them back into the continent so that they could soar. Then he would have raised another powerful alley. As for the Xuan beasts, he trusted that they wouldn't take action against them. They had witnessed the destruction of Heavenly Fate Island. Most importantly, he had also destroyed their headquarters, ruining the resources they had been stockpiling for countless years. That was a grievous blow to them, and they would be forced to lie low for a while. This was the best chance for the cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race. Very quickly, a heavy piece of news spread throughout the martial heaven continent. The cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race that had been hunted down by the Xuan beasts was no longer hiding. They were establishing their headquarters in the eastern Xuan region. At the same time, Long Chen announced that the cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race was allied with the Dragonblood Legion. If anyone dared to touch the cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race, he would go to their home for his next tribulation. For Long Chen to publicly support the cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race was a bit surprising but within reason. However, his promise was a bit vicious. Just his life star tribulation had been enough to destroy Heavenly Fate Island and the headquarters of the Xuan Beasts. That kind of tribulation wasn't something that just anyone could survive. At the same time, the Martial Heaven Alliance also came out in support of the cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race. While Long Chen was now outside the Martial Heaven Alliance, he was still one with them. However, he was no longer under the Martial Heaven Alliance. He now allied with them. After establishing their territory, countless cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrows began to flock over from their strongholds. Long Chen hadn't expected them to number in the millions. However, the majority of them were still young and hadn't fully grown. That was because when the Xuan beasts had suppressed them, many of the seniors of their race had fought to the death. As for the weaker members, they could only do their best to reproduce as much as possible. This generation's leader of the cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race was named Kei Yuzhu. She was at the mid-twelfth rank, equivalent to the human race's second step of Nether Passage. Within the cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race, there were a total of eleven people on Kei Yuzhu's level. However, they didn't have a single existence on the level of the late twelfth rank. The human race's Nether Passage realm was split into four steps. While 12th rank magical beasts were the same but merely with different names. They were the early 12th rank, mid 12th rank, late 12th rank, and the great circle of the 12th rank. And just like the Nether Passage realm, the difference between each level was vast. When the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrow race declared they were coming out once more, the Dragonblood Legion naturally came to their new headquarters while Ku Jinying and the others from the Martial Heaven Alliance were also present. However, the old man didn't come. He only sent Boss Ba and the others. Boss Ba stealthily told Long Chen that the old man had been completely infuriated last time, even breaking tables and chairs in his rage. 
It had taken quite a bit of that kind of venting before he calmed down. Originally, he had also been thinking of coming, but upon thinking that he would see Ku Jinying, he had decided not to come. Long Chen couldn't help sighing inside. Was this a case of growing more like a child the older you got? Originally, he had just been expecting the Martial Heaven Alliance to come, but even Zheng Wenlong was here, bringing a celebratory gift and representing the Huaian sect to use his words. As long as there was business to do, they would come. After greeting him, Long Chen smiled. Brother Wenlong, don't blame me for not sending you an invitation. I was afraid you would come find me for the debt I owe you. Long Chen had used the Scarlet Blood Spirit Fish and quite a few medicinal pill formulas as collateral to take out a huge loan. That had been the only way to create the divine items for the Dragon Blood Legion. Those things were still in Zheng Wenlong's hands, but they hadn't been turned into money just yet. It could be said that Long Chen owed him a huge debt. Hiding from your debt, is it? When have I ever demanded you to pay me? As long as you're still living well, my profits will continue to come rolling in, laughed Zheng Wenlong. The amount of money that Long Chen had borrowed from Zheng Wenlong was so great that it could affect the entire operation of the Huaian sect. However, in the long view, the profit exceeded the risk. Most importantly, the Huaian sect was now going all out in raising alchemists. They were crazily snatching up the medicinal pill market, and Pill Valley's monopoly was being broken. This was thanks to Long Chen, even the corrupt path, ancient races, ancient family alliance, and the others were secretly buying pills from them. The Huaian sect was a true neutral sect, and as long as there was business to do, they would do it. They wouldn't inflate prices, while the quality of the pills was guaranteed. The prices of the Huaian sect's pills were in general a tenth lower than Pill Valley's. Just 10% wasn't much but medicinal pills took up 60% of a sect's yearly resources budget. The remaining 40% was enough for the sect's construction needs, maintenance, administration, and other necessities. Medicinal pills were truly the lifeblood of a sect most importantly. They had entered the great era where countless geniuses were rising. The large sects were willing to spend all their money on raising those geniuses. So this had become a crazy era for buying medicinal pills. The demand had exceeded the supply, so Pill Valley had long since adjusted the prices of their pills to get more money, and they were continuously increasing the prices the demand increased. That dissatisfied their customers, but there was no way around it because of their monopoly. However, the medicinal pill formulas that Long Chen had released destroyed that monopoly. The Huaian sect had announced that they were hiring alchemists, and they were also focusing more on nurturing their alchemists. The current Huaian sect was encroaching on Pill Valley's businesses, but Pill Valley couldn't do anything about it. They even suspected that there were traitors amongst their higher-ups who had sold those pill formulas to the Huaian sect. So they had started an internal investigation. So the money that Long Chen had borrowed was truly nothing when it came to the profit that his pill formulas would bring in. However, they were still in the early stages, and his formulas still hadn't made up the money he had borrowed. It would take at least half a year before he paid off that debt with his pill formulas. Today was a lively day for the cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race. The various large powers sent over congratulatory gifts. Even quite a few people came from the neutral powers. As long as the neutral camp's people didn't participate in battles, they could suck up to either side. They didn't want to offend either side, at least on the surface. Furthermore, the neutral camp sects were very crafty, only sending some of their senior people over, not their sect leaders. That was perfect, as they could give face to Long Chen and the Martial Heaven Alliance without offending the Xuan Beasts. Someone from the Xuan Beasts actually came. Guo Ran and the others' expressions changed. There were over ten experts who had come bearing the air of the Xuan Beasts. The Dragonblood warriors prepared their weapons, as long as they caused the slightest fuss. They would cut them down. Your. K. Yushu noticed them. She couldn't believe her eyes. Senior Yushu. We're gratified to see you still alive. The speaker was an elder who was the leader of this group. He wept. Guo Ran and the others slowly loosened their grips on their weapons. It seemed that they had misunderstood. Through K. Yushu's introductions. They learned that these people belonged to the Cloud Rain Lightning Sparrow race. 
a branch of the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrow race. When the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrow race was expelled from the Xuan beasts, quite a few experts of the cloud rain lightning sparrow race were hunted down as well. They had been hiding this entire time, on their last breaths. Upon learning that the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrow race had come out once more and established their own territory, they immediately rushed over. Seeing Kei Yuzhu, they were filled with emotions. Kei Yuzhu was also crying. She thought back to how glorious the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrow race had been back in the day. Now they had fallen to this extent and even implicated their allies. All right, starting today. The cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrow race is rising back to its former glory. You will share that glory with us, promised Kei Yuzhu. Kei Yuzhu's promise was serious. Her cultivation base might not be strong enough to promise such a thing, but she had already seen the hope of the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrow race. It was Long Chen. The myriad spirit diagram had already been opened for them. The majority of their divine abilities had originally been lost. But now that their inheritances were being restored, they were rapidly growing stronger. The fact that they no longer had to hide in minor worlds also improved their cultivation circumstances. Other than that, Long Chen had started on creating transportation formations connecting the Martial Heaven Alliance's headquarters, the Zhuangshan Dao sect, and this place. There were also formations connecting them to hundreds of other powers so that they could share their spirit gathering formations to cultivate. This was a joyous occasion. The Martial Heaven Alliance had gained another alley with limitless potential. They had once more grown stronger. The Xuan beasts have sent a congratulatory gift. Just as people thought that everyone coming had arrived and they were starting to prepare a banquet as thanks to all their guests. A strange voice rang out. A small group of Life Star disciples walked in. They weren't from the Xuan beasts. They were humans. They put on a domineering front, but the fear in their eyes could be seen by everybody. When they saw Long Chen, their bodies involuntarily quivered. As for why their voices had sounded very strange before, it was because they had tried to sound disdainful, but their voices shuddered, making it sound odd. We represent the Xuan beasts in sending a gift. Are you not going to greet us? Said the lead disciple. Don't recite the script that they gave you to put your life in danger. I don't know if I should praise your bravery or curse you for your stupidity. Interrupted Long Chen. He didn't know if these people had been forced here or had been bought. But based on their fear, they didn't want to be here. However, they had still come. So their gift couldn't be anything good. Bring out your gift. Said Long Chen indifferently. That person hastily took out a case and handed it over. The cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrow races experts came forward. When they opened it, their killing intent soared. Courting death. One of those experts was about to kill these people but was stopped by Q Yuzhu. Looking inside the case, they saw heads. They were the heads of the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrow race. They belonged to the experts that had been hunted down during the Xuan Beast's cooperation with Heavenly Fate Island. Now that the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrow race was establishing their territory, they sent over those heads. It was clearly a contemptuous insult. Did the Xuan Beasts demand you to tell us anything? Asked Kei Yuzhu. As the leader, she had to remain calm and not be so easy to anger. The Xuan Beasts were being clear. Even if the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrow race had found support, they would not let them off. They had sent heads without attacking this time, but next time, when they did attack, they would cut off all their heads. They didn't give us anything to say, but they did order us to say things that would anger you. Sorry, we have no choice. If we didn't do it, our wives, children, and elders would be killed, said one courageous disciple suddenly, as expected. They had been forced. This was why they had sent humans. If they had sent Xuan beasts, they wouldn't be able to return. They were just scapegoats. Long Chen suddenly had a thought. What sect are you from? We are disciples of the Sea Spirit Gate, said that disciple respectfully. Although they were terrified of Long Chen, they also revered him. I understand. You were in the first group of sects to join Pill Valley's side. Your sect is too weak. In the eyes of your so-called sect, your expendable cannon fodder, it should be the Xuan beasts that caused your sect to send you out to your deaths. In truth, 
The wrong ones aren't you but your sect's higher-ups. For your family, you were willing to come despite the danger. That means all of you are real men. There's no need for you to go back if you don't wish to. You can report directly to the Martial Heaven Alliance's fourth commander. As for your families, they will receive the Martial Heaven Alliance's protection, and your original sect won't dare to touch a single hair on their heads, or they'll be asking to be exterminated, said Long Chen. Those disciples were delighted by Long Chen's words. Some of them even wept. Long Chen had not just resolved the danger to their families, but he was even giving them the honor of being the disciples of the Martial Heaven Alliance. The disciples wept and knelt, expressing their thanks. Long Chen waved his hand, bringing them up. Hot-blooded men should only kneel to their parents. Don't submit even to heaven and earth. When you get used to submitting, it will silently erode the sharpness of your Dao heart. I've given you this chance, but as for your futures, it'll be up to yourselves, said Long Chen. The disciples thanked him, bowed deeply to Ku Jinying, and then took their leave, going straight for the headquarters of the Martial Heaven Alliance. Smart. Li Xiangxuan smiled and praised Long Chen. Xuan Master over praises this little one, chortled Long Chen. What's going on? asked Ku Jinying. That smile between Long Chen and Li Xiangxuan was not ordinary. Li Xiangxuan said, This move of Long Chen's was very smart. Once those disciples join the Martial Heaven Alliance, it will cause a chain reaction of the sects that have betrayed the Martial Heaven Alliance and those that are just standing by the sidelines. Countless disciples within them are dissatisfied by their decisions. However, they're just disciples without any authority. They can't change the decisions of the higher-ups. We refused the sects from joining our ranks because we don't want those scheming old fellows. They're too selfish and care only about themselves. But their disciples are different. It is the current junior generations of this world that are the main characters of this era. We don't want those scheming old fellows but the disciples have immense potential. As long as we can draw them over, they will become powerful warriors. When news of those disciples being accepted into the Martial Heaven Alliance spreads, it will cause more and more disciples to follow in their footsteps. In the end, we'll have the genius disciples while leaving Pill Valley with the useless scheming elders. Through this explanation, Ku Jinying and the others came to a sudden understanding. It was no wonder Long Chen had so directly refused to allow those sects to join them. He already had a plan to deal with them. He was removing the trash while keeping the gold. This was perfect. Ku Jinying couldn't help sighing over the fact that this fellow was a monster. Ku Jinying immediately sent people to spread word of this incident and to make sure that those new disciples were treated well. They would make the whole world learn that the Martial Heaven Alliance wasn't excluding everyone. They were only excluding the toxic. As long as they were willing to fight for the continent, they could be accepted regardless of their original position. The disciples were innocent. It was the higher-ups who had decided to betray the Martial Heaven Alliance. So the Martial Heaven Alliance would only accept the disciples. The majority of those higher-ups were toxic. Although a portion of them weren't toxic, the Martial Heaven Alliance didn't have the time to accurately determine that. Most importantly, they weren't important. They had already reached their lives' higher points. In truth, they were no longer very valuable. The cultivation world was merciless and cruel. The Martial Heaven Alliance's resources couldn't be spent on the useless. They needed elites. Ku Jinying could already imagine countless disciples throwing themselves to her side thanks to this one move. It wasn't just because the Martial Heaven Alliance was strong now, but also because it was the home of the righteous path. Kayus who had those heads put away and announced that they would be properly buried another day. Today is a celebratory day for the cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race. Thank you to everyone who came from so far away. I hope you'll accept my apologies for my poor accommodations. For most sects, they would celebrate for three days and nights on the inauguration. However, it was much simpler for the Shuen beasts. They would normally end things with just a meal. The cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race had too many things to do. They were simply announcing that they were the rulers of this territory and that they were returning to this world. I've already prepared the food, and we can start the feast in just a few hours. However, people can't waste their lives. Some things have to be done immediately, don't you think? 
race leader Yazhu. Long Chen looked at Kei Yazhu with a smile. Kei Yazhu didn't know how to reply to such a thing. After all, conversing with humans was more difficult for the Xuan beasts who always liked to be direct. He, Brother Long is saying that there's still some time until we eat. Maybe we should get our exercise done to work up our appetites, said Cloud. After knowing Long Chen for so long, she could guess what he wanted to do. You're saying, Kei Yazhu was startled. I mean that people should be magnanimous and not always keep grudges, said Long Chen. Now Kei Yazhu didn't understand again. It was Li Xiangxuan who said, Long Chen rarely keeps grudges because he's afraid of forgetting them. That's why he prefers to get revenge immediately. So there's no need to keep the grudges. Kei Yazhu finally understood. Since the Xuan beasts had come to provoke them, they wouldn't leave things as they were. They would strike back immediately. All experts of the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrow race. Hear my orders. Gather for an attack. Kei Yazhu immediately gathered all the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrows that were at the 11th rank and above. Haha, <laughs> move out. Our target is the Xuan beasts headquarters. Long Chen laughed, while others bitterly smiled. This fellow was definitely not destined to have a peaceful life. This time, there would be a good show to watch. Space shook. One rainbow-colored figure shot through the sky after another. There were over a thousand cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrows flying through the air, and they were a wonderful sight to behold. The current cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race was no longer as powerful as before. Only just over 30 of these figures had reached the 12th rank. The rest were at the 11th rank. However, that didn't affect their domineering appearance. Cloud was carrying Long Chen and the others. She was actually flying at the very front. She was incredibly fast. She would only slow down in places that had cities or sects. Heavens, isn't that Long Chen? There's his dragon blood legion too. What are so many experts of the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrow race doing together? Countless experts were amazed by what they saw streaking over their heads. They knew that today was the day that the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrow race was announcing their return. For Long Chen to lead them through the sky so fiercely, what were they planning? The cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrow race was viewed as traitors of the Xuan beasts. Hence, it had been many years since so many cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrows had appeared on the continent. Furthermore, Long Chen was leading the Dragon Blood Legion along with the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrows. That couldn't be for nothing. Brother Long Chen, where are we going? asked Cloud. Don't rush. Let's stroll around for a while longer to announce to the world that the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrow race is back. We will no longer be bullied, and we want revenge. That way, your old followers will be more comfortable with joining your side. You'll need to gather your old loyal subordinates, said Long Chen. The cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race had once been the most powerful race of the Xuan beasts. But due to the mechanisms of other races' schemes, they became victims and were expelled from their midst. To wipe away the insult and humiliation of having such a thing done to them would require blood. They would need to rise once more. By patrolling like this, they were showing off their power and making a kind of announcement. But this way, the Xuan Beast's headquarters will be prepared. We won't be able to sneak attack them. Right. Cloud didn't understand. Foolish girl. They aren't gods. They have no idea if we are targeting their stronghold or not. Right now, our general roaming direction is the headquarters of the Martial Heaven Alliance. They might think that the cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race is going there to express their sincerity and thanks. That kind of etiquette was quite common in the ancient era. The Xuan beasts won't think we're attacking them because their actions today have gone a bit too far. In truth, those experts were already dead. By returning their heads, they can say that they were simply returning their remains. We have no reason to be angry, said Long Chen. Those heads had been cut off in their attacks of the cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race's strongholds. They had kept the heads to research the divine marks on their crystal bones to see if they could replicate the cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race's divine abilities. However, such a thing was incredibly difficult. They weren't capable of it. With the cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race announcing their return, they sent over the heads to humiliate them. However. On the other hand, 
they could also say that they were returning their remains. That kind of double-faced action was particularly disgusting. Then if we don't have an excuse to attack, what are we supposed to do? Asked Cloud worriedly. Do we need an excuse to attack? If they need an excuse, then for example, we can say that the weather's not bad today, said Long Chen. When had he ever required an excuse for his actions? The Dragonblood warriors laughed. As for Ku Jianying and the others, they hadn't come. They had returned to where they had come from. To use Long Chen's words, they had come for formalities only. The Dragonblood Legion and the Cloud Chasing Heaven Swallowing Sparrow race were enough. If they went as well, it would be bullying. Countless experts of the continent stared up in shock as the Cloud Chasing Heaven Swallowing Sparrows passed through the sky. The Cloud Chasing Heaven Swallowing Sparrows felt extremely emotional inside at this. After so many years, they were finally flying over the continent once more. They were about to wipe away years of humiliation. Some of them were unable to hold back their bird cries, releasing their resentment and anger. Speed up. Long Chen sent a message to Cloud. Multicolored light flowed around Cloud, transforming her into a rainbow that streaked across the horizon. Following Cloud, the others also sped up, and the sound of their cries grew more and more resounding. In the end, they were so fast that the people below only saw a rainbow streak going through the air and heard their cries, without even being able to see their figures. The cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrows accelerated more and more unleashing their emotions. They felt something that they hadn't felt before. They quickly arrived at the territory of the Xuan beasts. Their arrival immediately caused an alarm to ring out. However, they ignored everything, charging straight for the headquarters. The cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrows were too fast, and the Xuan beasts were unable to stop them. He, we've arrived. Long Chen had a gratified smile. As expected, Zheng Wenlong's reports were very accurate. They hadn't come for nothing. Who's there? There were actually Nether Passage experts here at the headquarters. Countless other experts were also rushing over. These people weren't from the Xuan Beasts. Last time, their headquarters had been destroyed by Long Chen and Ji Wuming. Hence, the Xuan Beasts had moved their headquarters to a neighboring plot of land and started to rebuild. This time, rather than just creating caves in a mountain, they were building a grand protective formation. They had invited countless craftsmen to do so. There were all kinds of materials stacked up. The workers were busy surveying and planning for the construction when Long Chen arrived. We're here to accept our gift. Long Chen smiled and walked down from the sky. Those Nether Passage experts' expressions completely changed. What what are you doing here? Even the Nether Passage experts who had reached the second step trembled in fear. Long Chen had slain Ji Wuming who had been at the third step and supported by a supreme sect's karmic luck. As a result, they didn't have the slightest confidence to go against him. If he wanted to kill them, they probably wouldn't even be able to run. I've already said I'm here to accept a gift. What? After being allied with the Xuan beasts, have the ancient family alliances people forgotten how to speak the human language? Long Chen sneered. It seemed that the people in charge of rebuilding the Xuan Beast's headquarters were from the Ancient Family Alliance. The Ancient Family Alliance had once been one with the Righteous Path, but due to Delong, they had fractured. Then through several large battles, both sides had taken losses, and the hatred between the two sides grew. Their hatred for each other had grown to the point where neither side cared who was right and who was wrong. Accepting what gift? Asked that Nether Passage expert. He began to sweat. He had a bad feeling. Today is the day that the cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race is returning to the continent. The Xuan Beast sent a paltry congratulatory gift. Feeling like they were all one family, they felt embarrassed to send anything bigger. But since they're embarrassed, we came to take it ourselves. Long Chen waved his hand. Brothers and sisters of the cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race, no need to stand on courtesy. If it can be moved, take it. Following Long Chen's orders, the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrows opened their mouths. The piles of materials were swallowed by them. No, those are. That Nether Passage expert suddenly stopped. A white bone spear was pointed at him, and Gu Yang was staring at him icily. As long as he said another word, he wouldn't hesitate to attack. 
Long Chen patted that nether passage expert on the shoulder. You and I are both parts of the human race. If it weren't for that idiot D Long, we might be friends. So sometimes right and wrong are important to be clear about. Why would humans make things hard on other humans? These resources belong to the Xuan beasts. And I've come here to accept my gift from the Xuan beasts. Does it have the slightest thing to do with you? If you're willing to risk your life for them, I'll accompany you. If you aren't, then just quietly watch the show. After all, this has nothing to do with you. As long as you don't raise your weapon against me, I won't do anything to you. But if you do, then there will be no room for negotiation. You can decide yourself if you want to live or die. If you don't want to die, then you should back up a bit from those resources. The workers fled to the side. The resources were sucked up by the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrows. Long Chen had heard that the Xuan beasts were reconstructing their headquarters, and those resources were not cheap. Apparently, Pill Valley had paid quite a price, as the Xuan beasts themselves were unable to afford such luxury. Now that they were sucked into his pocket, Long Chen really felt refreshed. The Xuan beasts would have never imagined that after just a short moment of peace, Long Chen would dare to run over and snatch their resources. Furthermore, he even had an excuse to do so. Seeing those resources being sucked away by the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrows, that nether passage expert could only shake his head with a bitter smile. Those resources belonged to the Xuan beasts, and he was only in charge of the construction. The Xuan beasts shouldn't take out their anger on him, right? Suddenly, the void rumbled. Countless experts came surging over, blazing with killing intent. The one at the front was the leader of the Xuan beasts, Pen Wanli. Long Chen, you have gone too far. Oh, isn't this the great leader of the Pen race? How coincidental to run into you here. Long Chen acted surprised to see the furious Pen Wanli. He then laughed. Truly, thank you for your generosity. As for your gift, I'll accept it. Many thanks for your support of the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrow race. There's no need to invite us for dinner. We still have many guests waiting for us at home. Let us meet again. Seeing Long Chen turn to leave, Pen Wanli roared. Long Chen, hand over our resources, or don't even think about leaving alive. Your resources? What proof do you have that these resources belong to you? Long Chen cocked his head at him. Do they have your name on them? Or your seal? Are they yours just because you say they are? Long Chen was being absolutely shameless. Pen Wanli felt like he might explode with rage as he had never seen anyone so shameless. Long Chen's shamelessness was actually above the Xuan beasts. Don't try twisting logic. Those are resources we bought from Pill Valley. Pill Valley can testify shouted Pen Wanli. More and more experts of the Xuan beasts arrived. But when they saw the Dragon Blood Legion and the Cloud Chasing Heaven Swallowing Sparrow race, their expressions changed Novaloon.com The Cloud Chasing Heaven Swallowing Sparrow race had once been kings amongst the Xuan beasts. Their divine abilities were famed for their power. Later on, for some unknown reasons, the Pen race joined hands with several other large races to expel them from the Xuan beasts. Several large battles were fought. Although most of the experts of the Cloud Chasing Heaven Swallowing Sparrow race were killed in those battles, the battles had injured the very core of the Xuan beasts. The Cloud Chasing Heaven Swallowing Sparrow race had actually been powerful enough to deal a grave blow to the Xuan beasts even as they were ousted. From this fact, it could be seen just how frightening they were. Now that the Cloud Chasing Heaven Swallowing Sparrow race had Long Chen's support and was rising on the continent once more. The Xuan beasts were all tense. Long Chen couldn't help laughing at Pen Wanli. How interesting. So even the unreasonable Xuan beasts are willing to give proof to others? How did unreasonable people like you start talking about such things with me? Could it be that you're now afraid of me and don't dare to attack me? However, I'm not here to talk reason with you today. I came to accept your gift. I've now taken it. And whether or not you like it, I'm taking it. What can you do? All the craftsmen that had been working here looked at Long Chen oddly. Long Chen was definitely domineering enough. The Xuan beasts were famed for being unreasonable and suppressing others with their power. But today, Long Chen was openly taking their things. The craftsmen sighed inside. Finally, a true domineering existence had appeared amongst the human race. He was practically a bandit. 
It seemed that such a scenario had never occurred in all the history of the Xuan Beasts. Although the ancient family alliance was no longer allied with the Martial Heaven Alliance, in the end, they were still part of the human race. Seeing Long Chen be so domineering, they couldn't help feeling admiration for him. Long Chen, are you declaring war on the Xuan Beasts? demanded Pen Wanli. He took out a pitch black spear. When that spear appeared, the air grew heavy. That was an incredible divine item. A terrifying aura spread like that of an ancient beast. Long Chen summoned Evil Moon and rested it on his shoulder. He took a few steps forward until he was less than a mile from Pen Wanli. Pen Wanli, since I dared to come, I'm confident in being able to leave safely. If you want to fight, of course I'll welcome you. Our enmity doesn't stem back just one or two days. If you want to bring our enmity to an end today, I'd be very pleased. Don't the Xuan beasts like sending gifts? Today, I am stating this clearly. I'm here to accept your gift. If you're giving, I'm taking. If you're not giving, I'm still taking. If you're giving, I'll treat it as a gift. If you're not giving, I'll treat it as a protection fee. To put it even clearer, I'm here to find trouble with you. You can suck it up, or you can fight, said Long Chen. Even as more Xuan beasts gathered here, he didn't have the slightest fear. Instead, his battle intent was flowing out of him. The dragon blood warriors cheered, their voices filled with killing intent. It was bone chilling. These were the warriors of the Martial Heaven Continent's number one legion. Even Nether Passage experts were terrified. Long Chen, you have gone too far. Pen Wanli was shuddering from rage. He had never suffered such humiliation in his whole life. At this moment, Kei Yushu suddenly stepped forward. We have gone too far? Pen Wanli, it was you who was envious of the cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race's divine abilities. You wanted to connect our races by marriage, but we refused. So you allied with other races to expel us. You even framed us as blasphemers of the Peng Emperor. Using that excuse, you hunted us down until we were almost exterminated. Was that not going too far? The secret of the Xuan beasts was actually exposed. Absolute nonsense. My Kunpen race has the bloodline of the Great Pen race. Why would we care about your pitiful bloodline? It was clearly your cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race that got arrogant and wanted to change the name of the Pen Emperor to the Sparrow Emperor. The historical records are very clear. Don't you feel embarrassed making up such lies? The cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race blasphemed the Pen Emperor wanting to become the absolute rulers and destroying the peaceful unity of the Xuan beasts. Every one of you should be put to the death, shouted Pen Wanli. You, Long Chen raised a hand. Race leader, we are not here to discuss history. We are here to accept gifts. There is no absolute black or white in this world. As for who is black and who is white, it depends on whose fist is bigger. Whoever's fist is bigger is whoever's mouth is bigger and whoever's mouth is bigger is the right one. If someone argues, they can just be eaten. There is no need for reason. So don't be angry. Your only fault was not being strong enough to threaten certain people's positions. For them to eliminate potential threats isn't wrong of them. Whether it's in the cultivation world or the world of the Xuan beasts, such a thing is common. That's why talking reason is meaningless. Even if they apologized, would you forgive them? So a blood debt must be paid with blood. As for arguing who is right and who is wrong, there's no need. Hearing that, Kei Yushu calmed down. Long Chen was correct. Debating history had no meaning. The cloud-chasing heaven-swallowing sparrow race had been hunted down for so many years. So many of them had died to their hands. If the history was cleared up and their enemies apologized, would that be enough for them? No. Pen Wanli, I've taken your gift. Again. I have guests waiting for me, so we won't be staying for dinner. Of course, if you want to keep us here, I'd be delighted. However, I should warn you that my temper isn't good. If I drink too much, I might just destroy a hundred of your races. That's why, suddenly, a strange sound rang out. It was so loud that it eclipsed Long Chen's voice. Everyone turned toward a certain person in the Dragonblood Legion. It was wild. Wild had dozed off and that sound had been the sound of his stomach rumbling. The sound woke him up, and seeing the Xuan beasts in front of him, he shouted, Brother Long, is it time to eat? 
I'm hungry. Wild's gaze made those Xuan beasts shiver in terror. In the last battle, Wild had killed many of their experts, including true immortal Jiaoki. They had then been eaten by him. That scene was still fresh in their minds. To the Xuan beasts, Wild was a terrifying monster. Wild was not a cultivator, and he didn't have any of the aura of a cultivator. That was why they had overlooked him before. But after that last battle, all of them were apprehensive of him. He was a monster that hungered for their flesh. Even Pen Wanli's expression changed. During that battle, the leader of the ancient races, Long Jun Kang, had only been able to hold Wild back. He hadn't been able to suppress this crazy monster. The Dragon Blood Legion didn't just have Long Chen. Wild's power was no lower than his, and there were also the captains like Gu Yang, Yu Zifeng, Li Qi, Song Mingyuan, as well as Xia Chen, Guo Ran, Meng Qi, Chu Yao, Tang Wanur, Lu Ruian, and Cloud. Only a portion of the Xuan beasts had gathered, and the rest were still on the way. If they were to fight now, Pen Wanli was confident in being able to block Long Chen and Wild. But the others were also dangerous. The dragon blood warriors were like wolves, and adding on the cloud chasing heaven swallowing sparrow race, rivers of blood would flow. That blood would definitely belong to the Xuan beasts. Long Chen's arrival today was too sudden, and they hadn't been the slightest bit prepared. Let's go back and eat. Of course, if anyone wants to hold us back, we won't mind eating here. Now Long Chen's words had a double meaning. Of course. Wild understood it in only a simple manner. He would rather eat here because there was more food here, and the quality was better. Wild involuntarily gulped down a mouthful of saliva. The way his eyes stared at them gave them goosebumps. It seemed like he was begging them to stop Long Chen. Long Chen then led his people away just like that. The Xuan beasts that had formed an encirclement around them didn't dare to make a sound. They hastily scattered. Pen Wanli clenched his spear tightly. His whole arm was shaking, but in the end, he didn't move to stop Long Chen. He just watched as Long Chen and the others vanished. Boo! Pen Wanli slammed his spear into the ground. A wave of dust soared into the sky. Long Chen, just wait for next time. 